everybody get set, let's go. It's the next episode. It's the Premium Pete Show. News, interviews, all of the info. Listen up, it's the Premium Pete Show. If you want the scoop in the low, down low. Listen to the show, cause Milk said so. Fuck what you heard, better act like you know. Miss Lissa knows, it's the Premium Pete Show. Do you see me now? Do you remember me, the girl from the back of the class that used to wear the glasses, the one you used to laugh at, laugh at? Well, look at me now, brother. Well, you like fruit with peach chewing your girl's nipples. How you like them apples, asshole? I'm laughing at you. Uh. I'm laughing at you now. Oh, shit, it's you a voice? You told me I was ugly. I was scared to crack a smile. Ha, 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 shit. ha, ha. I'm laughing at you now. Ha, uh. ha, 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 ha. I'm laughing at you. Oh. 600 bins, 20 inch rims, house on the hill, hitting mad skins. Uh. Ha, 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 ha. It was all a scheme. I used to load the text with the magazine So I was mean, but I still had a scheme 17 years young, everything seemed fun Still considered a veteran, cause I feared none mm. Liz from the street where there ain't no rules But carry heat, cause she ain't no fool You ain't no fool I ain't no fool You ain't no motherfucking fool what the, I'm not yo, gonna be played with For a second I was like, damn, that's just I thought you were on The Voice for a second American Idol You heard it and I didn't no, no, even no, need then I was like, No, no auto-tune no, or it, nothing No, no, then I was like, holy shit I didn't know where you were going But then when I found out where you were going I was going with the laughing because I feel like we are staring our haters in the face week to week. Yeah, they doubted you, Pete. Yeah, they didn't know that you had this in you. They didn't know that List was going to come through and co-host this shit to the best of her ability. Oh, shit. Shut this shit down. That just sounds like a girl who you. had bamboo errands in it. I, I'm telling you, I got my new hair on. I'm feeling different. And then I felt like it was a good tribute because we're going to have a comedian in here. Absolutely. Well, listen, if we don't laugh, we'll cry. But you know what? I do want to shout out to the internet. Welcome back to another episode of the Premium Pete Show featuring Miss Listen Knows. Um, listen, last week's episode... Three hours with Quark Kent, man. Lord I mean, help I mean, us. That was, it was a good one. Three, I mean, yo, the crazy thing is this, is that in podcasting, it's amazing because I remember like on on the other show when we were doing like long episodes at times, we were worried like putting it out like, yo, will people fuck with this? Like, we did a Chuck D episode four hours. I had people come up to me and be like, yo, I, I listened to that joint five times. I'm like, five times four equals 20 Use your hours? Get the fingers. What the fuck? I was like, yo, I couldn't believe it. So what I realized, you know, being in the podcast game for a minute... I was understanding that when you really, digital and media people, they think like, you know, like one and a half minute is long. Mm. But when podcasts, I think like, you know, people take it as they go. I mean, you know this, you know, and, and listeners who listen, and you have the way you listen. Maybe you go on a road trip. I've seen someone say, yo, I'm going to D.C. this morning. Thanks for this Clark Kent episode. Mm -hmm. You know, the only thing, too, is that w what happened was, and, and I do want to say, the only thing I didn't like is that, I know. unfortunately, um, you know, one of the guys that was with Clark, his name is DJ Sherrod, cool cat, but uh, he, he didn't understand the podcast, like, you know, how it comes out. And pause. Good pause. And Clark went to Rap Radar, which is cool. I don't got nothing against, against Elliot or B-Dot. You going to drop their name? No, or, no okay, problem. Okay, I ain't got a problem okay, with that. Okay, we going to beep that out. But the point I'm trying to make is, like, we dropped the same day. So I called dude up and Clark was like, yo, I was barking on this dude. And I was like, yo, I like Sherrod, but yo, honestly... Even if you like someone, sometimes you just got to tell them, like, yo, you a fuckhead, you know? But, again, the same way I told Clark when he was here, sometimes competition brings awareness. Now, so people that didn't know about our show, but they knew about their show, they now know about ours, too. Yeah, yeah but I'll be honest with you. I, I, don't, I don't look at it as competition. And I'm explaining to you why. Because, I'll talk that, too. No, no, no. Because I'm not trying to do what they're doing. And I wouldn't, like, I'll be honest with you, I told them if I had another episode, I would never release that Clark episode because I feel like it takes away from them and it takes away from us. And that's not, you know, I, I'm not trying to do that. Like, the thing is, I just want to have some fun. I, like, I, I, I want to, like, if people look at the catalog, so, you know, you'll see everyone from, Co you know, comedians to, uh, to entrepreneurs to, to, sexologists. to sexologists to rappers to, you know, hey, how you go from having, you know, a cool V and biz, you know, and, and then moving to like a, a Tommy from Power, you know? So I guess what I'm saying is I want to go all around to another comedian, to this, to an entrepreneur. But anyway, I guess what I'm saying is I love that episode. The Quark episode had so many gems. It did. Three hours in, I can't believe, to be honest with you. Three hours, and I still had more stuff that I felt like I could have talked to Quark Wait, about. I had some stuff I wanted to talk to him about, too. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, damn, like, I had some, like, bullet points. 
And I ain't even get to hit them. Like, I wanted to know how he felt about, you know, like the East Coast, West Coast, how that was. Because he was so close to Jay, but Jay was so far from the beats. Like, he had a way of, of maneuvering around this. So I wanted to know about that. I wanted to talk to him more about, like, you know, because he, he was pro Jay. And I'm like, Jay is popping. But he kind of, like, was just like... Jay was like better than Big, so I wanted to talk to him more about that. Too. Well, not only that, I just think that he had his opinion, you know, and he was around them. So, you know, anyway, Quark tells good stories, and he I tells think great stories. Podcasts are great for and good stories. What's his, Rod Rod didn't even get to talk that much. Sherrod. Anyway, Sherrod fucked everything up, bro. Shout out to Sherrod. But <laughs> anyway, Sherrod did what he was supposed to do. He took that man on a press run because they were promoting something. It was, I guess, maybe we should have asked the right questions. Like, where else are you no, going? No, 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 no. I mean, you're right. I'm gonna, uh, listen, I'm going to say something, and then I'm going to end on uh, this conversation on, okay. uh, on that. Th- th- he knew. Oh. He knew that they were dropping Thursday morning. I told him I'm dropping Thursday morning. Nobody told me. That's true. So, Let's get this nigga so, washed, B. Like, what you got to... So, Listen, so, I'm going to call so my like, cousins. Like, you know, like Quark said, Quark said, Quark said, you know, dude should have just been transparent. But at the end of the day, I do support... I told Quark, at the end of the day, it's Brooklyn, and I know Quark a long time, and, 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 and I'm appreciative that he, you know, that he came on, and he's appreciative that he came on to, you know, just to chop it up. And, and, and listen, enjoy the episode. If you haven't listened to, go fuck with it. But Internet, listen, this week I'm so happy. Um, I've been uh, hitting this dude up. Sporadically, word. Know him a minute. I even said we needed to get this man. Absolutely, on the show. you did. And and listen, Damien Lemon, okay. And uh, you got some lemonade. You got some he lemon have juice. Nothing with lemons. I don't checked. But um, but one he thing. Got no lemon heads. No, nothing. But one thing I do like is is an internet. I think you're getting to see a pattern. Comedians. I love comedians. I love people who like to make people laugh, like myself. I take things as a joke. I'm a very jokey, jokey guy. So you know. Why not have somebody that is a comedian? Damien, welcome to the motherfucking show. Oh, shit. Welcome, welcome. I guess I should say before I even go any further, I just got done doing a Rap Radar interview. So that God shit. damn, when is that dropping? Same day this shit dropping. They told me. They was like, yo, we want to be in tandem with the motherfucking premium peak. Don't None use of, big words. What does that tell us? You gotta in t- tandem. You know what in tandem mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Together, together. Okay, okay. You know, sometimes. Said, nah. You said Lessa? Mm-mm. Sometimes when people. It's Lissa. That's what I said. Okay. Yeah, but Lessa. Don that. Lemon. Don. Wait, wait. Nah, see, now we getting with the blasphemy. Don't, that, that, that's not nice. That's not, that's if not he nice. gonna say my name wrong, I'm gonna say his name wrong. Mm. I'm Petty. Yeah, but, I'm Petty LaBelle. I already oh, told y'all man. I'm Petty as hell. Okay, okay. I'm praying. Pray on, pray for me. I'm gonna get better. Yeah, we're gonna pray for her. Okay. So, 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 <coughs> rap radar, you know. Um, yeah, man. It was deep. We was talking about, you know, because I used to rap. Niggas didn't know. I had some other shit. <laughs> I was going to ask you that. name, you know what I mean? So, you know, it was one of the things. Nigga beat out knew a whole lot about my catalog and shit. I was surprised. It went four hours. So, when that shit dropped, I just, you know, I give you the heads up, you know? It is what it is. You're a fool. Yo, you're popping. Yo, so, so listen. Yeah. It's been, I know you for a couple of years now. I know you for a while, man. And you have a hundred episodes on your fucking podcast. And I was like, yo, I got to come on the podcast over there. Pause. Right. You coming on the podcast? Oh, good, good pause. Man. Good pause. Good pause. You, you play the pause, pause game, David? I try not to play as much anymore. I used to pause. You about shit. to? I'm about to pause. You trying to play? Mm-hmm. You, you pause. Playing? You pause it on. See that? Yeah, pause. Y'all niggas is aggressive. With yo, I'm gonna tell you one thing. They was <laughs> like, yo, you know, I really want to expand upon pause. I want to expand upon the situation. <laughs> the fuck, we can't. Niggas can't even grow their minds no more. What, <laughs> what, what was the pause and expanding? Not at well because you don't want to expand anything around. You know, I don't need to express. That's not what I do. You I know. I told you he don't like big words. But I'm gonna tell you one thing. I was telling yeah. my brother in law something mm-hmm. the other day, and it was funny because I was What's like, that? yo. This poor shit is crazy sometimes, and when you yeah. live it, you got to live it. But the reason why I say it was crazy uh-huh. is his birthday was recently, and right. I got him a, a, like a like a bunch of cigars in a mason jar. And then, so you know, so I'm talking to him, and I was right. like, you know, I'm going on a cruise actually, so I'm, I'm, I'll be on a cruise uh, next this weekend coming right. up. So so boom, I might go. You know, you're gonna bring those cigars on the cruise, and uh-huh. he's like, "Yeah, my girl, you got a, you know, you got a nice package, you know." Uh-huh. Hey. And I was like, "Oh shit!" It, uh-huh. You know, pause because I meant that he got a nice package of cigars, right? Okay. But you know, he, he, but I didn't. He, he was like, "What do you mean, nice package?" I was like, "Well, if you're, you're missing right. the point. What the fuck I'm saying?" Because now all of a sudden he took it different, right? Because that's the problem. I used to not do the pause game. Okay. I wasn't even into it until right. I started doing this damn show. Like, yeah. Episode like one, like one through four, I was like 
we don't need to do this. We're grown. And now I'm just like five. It's like, it's like gay Mad Libs. You know what I mean? You're just trying to find, okay, what was the gay shit that I just said? You know what I mean? Oh, my bad. My bad, son. Yeah, I, didn't I mean, mean to tell you, know. you I love you, my nigga, but, uh, you know, pause. pause. I, you know I'm fucking your moms, but son, I love you, but pause, you know, nigga, is real, you know, ain't no whole bunch Where did you grow up? I grew up between Brownsville, Brooklyn, and Austin, New York. Oh, you was a nomad. No, he was a Brooklyn knight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, it, I ain't nomad. I knew where I was at. Okay. Yeah, I always had a home. I always had a key. Yeah, that was official. <laughs> You know, speaking of podcasts, when when I was talking about mm-hmm. Cork's podcast being three hours, yes, you being in the you know podcast game, you got a hundred plus episodes, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, do you understand what I'm saying about how people, you know, absolutely. Yeah. I know exactly what you said. Well, y'all were early. You've been in the podcast game, you know, the podcast game for a minute. Actually, I think we knew each other even before the podcast shit. I think I met you. When was the first time you started working with Nike? I think you were doing some stuff with Nike. All right. I met you at that, um, it was like a Nike ID challenge. Yes. And I was hosting that shit. And that might have been one of the first things I'd ever done for Nike. I was just hosting it. You was competing. Yeah. And you were out there with Dallas. Or Dallas Penn was somewhere on on the scene. I yeah. don't know if y'all were working together, but y'all had known each other. He was probably other. stealing the hors d'oirs that were, that were going around. He might have been doing that shit, you know. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, we we started talking then. You had the sneaker tube site yep, yep, at yep. that moment. But I think even before that, I don't know if you was... I knew, like, you know, you with the Combat Jack show. Yeah, most point, definitely. I used to do internet radio up at PNC for a minute. Okay, okay, okay. I, I was on PNC. What the hell? I, I was on P- I was on this show me. called The Earpiece. It was me, my man Adriel, go by um, Ad Reels. Okay. Linda Lights. Okay. It was just the three of us. And uh, we did a show called The Earpiece, and Combat Jack would come right behind us. Pause if we need to do That's that. That's a good now pause. Now we're going to beep all these comments on writing these timestamps down. Oh, y'all, y'all don't even... Oh, is no, it no, all no. Because we got to... Because I don't know what not to say. Is it y'all not nah, fucking with each other? Say it all. Make it, fu- it more oh, fun. Okay. Say everything you need to say. So anyway, so PNC. that's how I knew I knew combat, but I know for sure we met there. You had the sneaker tube shit popping. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. We talked about comedy a bit. You told me you know Roberto Vanderpool. You know what I mean? And then, you know, I just see you around. See you at all the sneaker-related events and shit like that, seeing the world. It was funny because I met you, when I met you, you were talking about uh, sneakers and your, your, your some of your comedy was about, like, mayor. Like, yo, this right. motherfucker sitting in a, a room. I forgot. I don't even know if right, you know the right. same material. No, I remember that. I did a, I did a spoof because yeah. mayor used to do the mayor TV where mm-hmm. this nigga was sitting in his den yeah. with wild <laughs> sneakers behind him and be like, yo, the toe box on this is uh, ostrich skin and all of this extra <laughs> shit. And I would watch all of those fun. To this day, I still watch, you know, sneaker unboxings and shit like that. It, it, it's crazy where the game is going now, oh, though. Oh, it's bananas. It's, 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 a, it's, I mean, it's hard to even, you can't even, like, the shit is ridiculous. It's overwhelming. Yeah. I mean, f- the thing is, too, you can't even, like, I guess what, if you don't have any connections, it's hard to even cop anything. That's yeah. the thing. It's hard to even, and, and, and you got to think about how crazy that could be for, like, um, like a mom, you know, that her son does good in school. And, Man. you know, she, Ma, I want this Jordan. Yeah, okay. You're going to wait outside. Mom's just going to have to start sucking dick. Yeah, I mean, it could be a possibility. <laughs> right? I mean, I mean listen, if they want to be there for their children, right? Come on, mothers. I mean, I, I, I grew up in Brooklyn. Fathers, too. Sorry, guys. I mean, let's do it. Yes, Pause. crackheads could do it. Then these fathers got to get into it. I mean, uh, oh, man, yeah, make I, the kid happy. You got to get baby Tristan them Jordans, Pete. What you going to do? No, what no, that no, mouth I'm using my do? plugs. I'm using my plugs. Yeah, my mouth. yeah you get yeah, the plug plugs. It. Exactly. exactly. Look at them bread ones is coming. You want to get those. You don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to pay more than box. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so, now go ahead. When, when did you uh, get into comedy? Uh, well, when did you know that you wanted to become a comedian? I, mean, I probably knew. I had known for a while. I got into comedy in two thousand five officially. Mm-hmm. I'd wanted to do the shit for a while. You know, like. You know, growing up, we had watched, you know, watched Delirious and sure. shit, and everybody watched Delirious. Everybody, I knew the words to that shit like it was a, like an album. You know what I mean? Down to the to the stops and all of that, the whole shit. So I, me and my man Monty, we used to just recite the shit back and forth, make each other laugh. That's when I found out, you know, you can make people laugh, you know? And mm-hmm. then once you start being known for being funny, that's like a talent. You know what I yeah. mean? Like anything else, you know, in a fight, you know, you're being fast. Sure. Girl, you know what I mean? So you just known for that type of shit. You know, when you first start being known for shit as a kid. And then uh, Cass was like, yeah, you should do comedy. You should get into comedy, blah, blah, blah. But around the time, like, when Def Jam was popping. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's when people were really talking about it. And uh, 
I was nervous. I wanted to do it, but I was like, I don't know, you know. Well, you, when you say nervous, just like afraid to... Afraid to jump on stage and find out I wasn't as funny as I thought I was. You, you know what's crazy? Andrew Schultz, I got to give him a lot of credit because he said something on here that really stuck with me. Yeah. And I know it had to, you know, really, you know, penetrate pause with some other people. Uh-huh. He's like, yo, I have job security. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean? How do you have job security? And he's like, because so, you know how many people are afraid to go on stage? Right. Or afraid of, think about it. Right. The biggest Absolutely. fear is public speaking right. or, or, or going on stage. And, 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 you know, you think about it, a comedian does have some type of job security. Yeah. Because not everyone is good at it. Mm-hmm. And not everyone is, is, is brave enough to jump up there. That's a good point. I do say that. Anybody, somebody's like, yo, I'm trying to get into comedy. What should I do? Or, you know, I think I can do this shit. Jump on stage. Soon as you jump on stage for five minutes, you're gonna know whether or not you should be doing it or not. You I know think what I, mean? I think people's biggest fear is is people not getting the jokes and people getting booed or yeah. and, and it's crazy because it's like I know so many different comedians and mm-hmm. and and I know you have have gone through comedy for a long time. Mm-hmm. Then then had a you know I'm sure you played times where you bomb. Mm-hmm. I know that time where they were booing you mm-hmm. and and I mean look at you now just overcome shit. We just gonna just, just walk past that way. No no we're gonna go to it. Oh, okay but we're gonna go we're gonna talk, we're gonna go about, it. Through, we'll talk about it. But but the point I'm making is there had to be times before that right that shit like that happened. Oh yeah, you have slow sets. You have bad sets. Did you start off the gate? Yeah, like, that sex too. Yeah, fucked up. Same Damn. night, bad set, bad Your sex was sex? fucking horrible. Lord, mm-hmm. you too chocolate to be giving out whack D. Oh man, and nah, your name start whack. with D. Ain't whack. Might when just life be give you lemons, miss. you give bad D. You know what I mean, I don't want to say that. I'm at least seventy percent. <laughs> I'm hitting. <laughs> you know what I mean? When I want to give myself some room for error, you know. But go ahead. What no, you when, you, when you just started comedy, you literally like did you do well right out the gate? I did good enough the first time. The first time I got on stage, I did good enough to get back on stage. You know what I mean? Because it I think that's the confusing part. Because I know I, I've heard people's stories, right? And it's like some people go three or four, you know, shows in right. and they're doing good, and then bomb. Yeah, it could happen. And then it's like holy shit! But I thought I was. You know what I mean? Yeah, it could happen. It could happen. And you don't realize it could happen until it happens. Mm-hmm. I think and you have to bomb though, like just to get that to. out out the way. Like no one's gonna have perfect. Like even Eddie Murphy had to have bomb. Everybody. Right? That's how. If you don't bomb as a comedian, you're not trying hard enough. Okay, because you, you gotta take those risks. Yeah, you gotta take risks. You can't play it safe because that's the hacky shit. You know what I mean? It's like being a boxer, being afraid to get punched. In the yeah, face. exactly. Like what the fuck are you doing? That's there? part of the gig. Like you want to be nice so you don't get knocked the fuck out, but there is the chance that somebody. It's like, could... it's like having sex and not thinking you're gonna come. Come on, yeah, what are you doing? I, mean, I don't always you know, come. I don't think, you know, I don't think coming is a pitfall. I think it's different girl sex, though. It's a different girl. Okay. Continue. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Girl, I need. I need. Well, that's I'm true. Sorry. That's you know, need... fucked up to you know. But so so before before so you you you're doing comedy, you're doing a couple of shows, right? Now where were some of the parts where like you were like holy shit, you know, maybe I'm not doing too good, or, or do I still want to do this, or you or just kept on going? How do you deal going? with it? You just uh, what do you do? You fuck. How do you deal with that shit? It hurt initially. It's really fucking with your ego more than anything. You know what I mean? Like, the first few times it hits you, you're like, God damn, you devastated. You you don't know if you want to do it anymore. You you don't know if it was you. You mad at what you, you know, maybe you could. You, you go through the whole shit. You replay everything in your head. Damn, should I have said it like that? Did I rush the joke? Was I off? Was I, you know what I mean? Was I drinking? Was it, you know what I mean? Did I need to go in on this chick? Did I need to call her? You know, you'll learn certain shit. There's certain things that you just can't do. You know what I mean? You'll just learn how to get better and you keep going. Yeah, I mean, and and, and keep in mind too, you know, while most comedians are doing this, and I'm sure this was you, you're going through the struggle. Like, it's not like... You're, oh, yeah. No, you... Like, you know what I mean? So it's like you're already kind of like, man, I'm not even really fucking making a lot of money, right? right? It's, it's a struggle. It's a grind. And sometimes I feel like it's so easy to quit. That's why I really give a lot of credit to people like comedians that stay in the game for a minute. Right. Right. Because right, right. keep in mind, like I said, you it is a struggle. It's a climb uphill. Yeah. You're not making a lot of money. Yeah. You're bombing. You're like, you know what? Fuck this yeah. shit. Because some people take shit so personal that it could get to a point where they give up. No, absolutely. There's been plenty of fucking times where you, I don't know if you want to give up, but you just, you don't see no hope for the shit. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? You're talking about Schultz. Me and Schultz kind of came up around the same time. So there'll be plenty of times after shows, we chopping it up. None of us is really, you know, seeing no, no light. 
You know what I mean? Like we getting on stage and we think we funny. Right. We seeing shit happen. We seeing people that we might know make it to television or get opportunities. And opportunities look like they starting to pass you by. And you like, God damn, I've been doing this X amount of years and this is nothing's changed. And you you could you could get frustrated. You could feel hopeless. But you got to be committed to the shit. You got to keep going through it, you know? What was your breaking point? Like, what was, like, your turning where it was like, okay, this is looking more promising. I'm on TV. Or whatever uh, it was. But well, we it haven't even got the TV yet. Yeah. We um, haven't even got the TV well, yet. Well, I said whatever it was. I'm just giving an example. Right. I said the breaking point. Right. Uh, I don't know, man. There's so many little points. You know what I mean? Like, it's so many. What was the one that get like, I'm, I know, I'm like, trying to. Like, I'm trying to give you uh trying to think of one of the first ones before television you know what i mean where you like okay this shit is starting to move Should like i, I did more bitches? nah you you mean you know that's that's i can get into comedy for bitches i mean i was doing all right before comedy you know what i mean like not no you know but i'll say this i'll say like you start getting on better lineups you know what i mean like when you first start doing comedy, you on comedy with you doing comedy with a bunch of people that don't get paid. Right. Y'all all kind of, you know, you at the bottom of the barrel. Nobody, thank you. Nobody's making no money. Blah blah blah. And the what about like what, what about the anybody people coming to the shows? What about the people who are there? Do you feel like um, the people that are there are like uh, you know doing com- like comedy before you? It's like is it like a union where you feel like it's hard to let? You in like motherfucker like you gotta bite your bones or make your bones. You know what I mean. You gotta pay your dues. Yeah, you gotta pay your dues. You know you gotta you gotta get funny. You know what I mean. Like you gotta get funny. You gotta get you gotta get as good as you really think you are because it's not just being funny. Funny is just the entry point. You know what I mean. Like being funny is one thing, but being able to perform on stage and be able to captivate a crowd and be able to kill that shit and be able to. To, to hold people's attention, to not get nervous when the crowd gets quiet because they really engaged in what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like, it's a craft to doing comedy, and that comes from just doing it over and over and over and learning and bombing and having a good one here and, and listening and watching other people and shit like that. And then the more you do it, the more people see you. Like I said, you start getting put on lineups with people that you might have seen on television. So you know this nigga getting paid. You might not be getting paid, but wait a minute, I'm on a lineup with niggas that's getting paid. And okay, so now I need to go super hard because X is on this show, and I know people came to see X. I need them to know about me. You know what I mean? So it was shit like that. You do things like that. It's, It's one of those things, too, where you'll feel some traction, before you see any real money mm. which is hard to relate to other people that are around you because they don't see no money they don't see you on tv so they'll act they'll talk to you like it's a fucking hobby and shit like yo so what's up with the comedy shit you still doing that blase because there's nothing that they can really like yeah, tangible I, like, yeah there's nothing tangible to be like yo my man is doing good out there and, you yeah know. and they may not even know so you know it's funny because yeah. it's like i feel like i'm the type of guy but yeah i'm fucking doing i'm out yeah. here doing some shit you know because not everybody may know. Right. It's funny you say that because now that I think about it, more and more you say comedians, it's a work in progress. Absolutely. It's not like, let me study 10 years and then I'll get into the comedy game. Nah. You're, it's a work right in progress. It's trial and error. You yeah. can't do comedy without people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when I first started doing comedy, I was trying to do the shit on the low. Like I wanted to, in my own mind, I wanted to be fucking great by the time everybody saw me. Yo, that's true, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I wanted to do the shit on, like, I was in the, I was in the village, and I'm handing out, like, you, to get stage time, you have to, bark. you got to bark, you got to be outside the club, yo, we got a comedy show, you know, you see these people at the Times Square, yeah. you see them in the Still the to this day? Yeah. No, no, this is when I first started. No, I'm saying, still to this day, you Absolutely. have to do that? Absolutely, that's yes. part of, that's part of the game, that you got to pay your dues, that you, you can't really go around some of these things. So I would bar. It would be like I'm selling crack though, because <laughs> on, like I still want to be low. I don't want niggas knowing that I do comedy because I'm not where I want to be yet. So I'm looking up and down the block, making sure I don't know nobody. Yo, I can comedy show. Come in, you know what I mean? That type of thing. I'm trying to get good on the low. But the thing about comedy is it's trial and error. It's in front of everybody. You can't escape people seeing your shit. You know what I mean? There is no, there is no safety in yo. I don't. I just don't want to bomb. Then don't get on stage. I tell any comedian, if you're doing this shit and you're funny and you really fuck with it, don't quit for at least three years. 
don't quit for at least three years. And that's if you're in like a, a major city. Like if you're in New York, you're in L.A., you're in Chicago, you're somewhere where there might be a bit of a scene. You know what I mean? Like, but if you're funny and you're from a small little, you know, you're from somewhere like in Indiana, some Indiana, some shit like that, and you're starting to get a little headway in your city, and you really feeling it, invest in yourself and leave that town and go compete where there's opportunity. Sure. You know what I mean? I met a guy um, right where all the comedy clubs are in, in uh, where that, what's that uh, falafel uh, place? My mom's right by the cellar. Yeah, so right by the cellar. I met a guy out there, and he's like, I'm from L.A., but L.A. comedy sucks. I want to come out here to New York. Right. And, you know, I guess it made me realize, too, of how much, like, us New Yorkers take shit for granted. Like, I'm kind of, you know, it's our everyday thing. How yeah. do they differ in L.A. compared to New York? Um, New York, I mean, there's definitely a difference. Is the humor there's, more dry? Nah, the humor is more like in LA. LA is you gotta you can't look at LA. You gotta say Hollywood. You okay. know what I mean? I don't just say LA. It's Hollywood because so you gotta look at that the context in there. When you go to LA to go to a comedy show, it's bigger. You know what I mean? Like New York. New York is the aesthetic is cramped. You going downstairs in the cellar? It's low ass ceilings. It's more shows. I'm you know it's, I'm, it's way more shows. There are ten different shows on a block. Sure, you could do three, four shows a night if you're a good absolutely. comedian. Absolutely, L.A. You could do that, but it's going to take you probably like a twenty minute drive between shows. L.A. is big. You go to the comedy store. There's a nigga at the piano that plays you to the stage. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it's it's presented in a way because these people in L.A. A lot of them are not really doing comedy to be great comedians. They're doing comedy to get seen so they could be in a movie or a sitcom or some shit like that. So you get a lot of people that are using more personality. They're trying to look adorable. They're trying to <laughs> be castable. Whereas in New York... Trying to smell good. Yeah, they try, exactly. They, You know what I mean? Like, they, you know, they're dressed. They're, it's Hollywood. Sure. They're, they're trying to become like a star. Whereas in New York, you trying to be better than the last guy. Mm. And the last guy fucking blew the roof off the room because comedy is just competitive. There's people out here. New York, the aesthetic isn't, you know, it's not Hollywood. It's niggas on the train. You know what I mean? It's hot as fuck. We all cramped in this shit. We all spending above our means. We, you know, I mean, you, you don't really, you don't really get much reward on your investment as a common New Yorker. Sure. You know what I mean? Niggas is living in shoe boxes. We don't want it. We don't need all of that cutesy shit. Like, we could get uncomfortable. Let's be real. Let's be funny. Make me laugh, nigga, because I was fucking... You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> took I me just some looked, shit to get yeah, here. Yeah, it took me some shit. I looked at my fucking bank statement. Shit ain't right right well, now. Well, I need... It's therapy for just, nigga. Just, so I, just so I know. Yeah. What does, like... So, a comedian that travels, right? Mm -hmm. Who's paying for the flights in the hotels? The club. Okay. Depending. Depending. At, and okay, depending, you know, who you are and your name and how big of a right, you know. Right, 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 right. So right. so so they would have to pay for so it's almost like a DJ set. Like mm -hmm. they would have to pay for the flight, the DJ, you know flight the hotel. Tell, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. And maybe a car service. Right. And then whatever, you know, yeah, ground transportation and whatever the quote is, whatever they paying you to come out there and do that for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you gotta get a booking agent. Did you? you gotta get a booking agent to really compete. You how could much do they, your own how, thing. how much are they taking? Uh what are they taking? Ten percent? Okay, that's not bad. That's not too bad. Hey, listen, you know what? They out there, you know, fishing for you. 10% of something is better than 100% of something. Exactly. Dollar. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. now you're doing comedy. Mm -hmm. You're out there. Mm -hmm. What comes first? Because I know. No, no. Oh, good pause, good pause. What, what, <laughs> he's God, like, God, he's God. like, these fucking pauses. Um, I know you were in Spider Man. Right. You started with Guy Cole from the beginning. Are you an OG guy code? I'm an OG first infantry. Okay. I made that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm absolutely So from, was it guy code the was the first thing? It was around the same time Spider Man. I'll tell you some funny shit. I was um you know, was, me and my lady was living together and shit and uh you know, money wasn't really popping. Sure. You know what I mean? This comedy shit was it was, it was, sure, it was a struggle. Laugh, but sure. it was a struggle. Yeah. And it was at this point where like, yo, what's pop? We need to get we need the, some money going. So I was like, all right. We looked into the situation to where I almost, through a friend of the family, there was like a security guard job available down in this area, right around here, like right literally blocks away. I can away. picture you like a security guard. All right. Well, no, no, I can no, picture no, no, you. No. We could all picture that nigga no, no, no. security guard. Top flight security. Okay. 
But so check it. I went through the whole shit, got my license and all of that. I didn't want to be a security guard, but I just wanted, you know what I mean? Well, I, I, I respect it. Yeah, I went, we had to get some money. Security. Yeah, this shit was starting to become, you know, shit, romance without finance. Yeah. You know, that type of thing. Clearly, this was yeah. not a white woman. Nah, this wasn't. She was know? not taking care nah, of nah, black nah. ass. So it was one of them situations where you kind of got to step up and figure it out. And I got this security job. And I didn't want this security job, dude. It was one of these situations where you're going to have to walk around. This is in the, the wintertime. <laughs> Niggas got to walk. There's no, you're not in you your security. You, I don't even think you got a baton. You look silly. You look as silly. Yeah. No, it might you got be. your cell phone so you could play games, but, but you don't think, have no weapons. I don't weapons, even think you could get into, yeah, No mace. Was, you just got to press the button and do your little spot checks and that's it. It was like, nigga, you got to be outside, though. It wasn't no vestibules or nothing. So you got to be outside. You got to be walking around. It was it was crazy. This is what I was going to do. And I didn't know how to get around the job because I hadn't started the job. You know, that's how you, you start a job. Then you first six months, you figure out how to get over on the job. But I didn't even get that far in. I'm at security guard school. I'm with other niggas that want to sure. be security. And everybody's taking security serious. I'm just doing this to get some paper. So I'm like, this is some bullshit. I go and do the audition for Spider Man. Wait, you you jumping way? Too. How no, did even Spider Man come out? How did how did it even get re- who reached my out to you? My management, my manager. I was uh, I used to be on this. Uh, I was managed by Apostle. Okay. This company owned by Dennis Leary. Okay. Dennis Leary was in that Spider Man, so his people, you know, reached out to him. They was doing some some. You knew exactly thing. what part it was for. Yeah, I know it was for a uh, cab driver. So I go to the spot, go to the audition, and I'm going to the audition, you know, shit, going to the audition. Meanwhile, I'm still, like, about to start the security guard Struggling. job in a second. Yeah. Go to the audition. I meet with the director, Mark Webb. It's just me and him in the room, which is typically, that doesn't really happen. You typically go through a casting agent, blah, 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 producers. You never really meet the director. Me and the director in the room, Dolo. Like this, and he's like, "I right, read it, riff, do whatever you want, you know, see what's what." So I'm riffing, I'm trying different takes. I'm what making you say this riffing mean going off script, like going, like this is the line, like improv in order, improv, like take it where you want to take it. He'll give you a note, all right, make him sound like this or do this. So I'm just, you know, I'm fucking selling it in the room, just me and him. He's laughing like shit. Wait, hold on, I got, I got to stop you yeah. for a second. You ever feel like when in that situation, because I felt like that. I've been in many situations mm-hmm. like that. Not particularly the Spider-Man job. And I was like, yo, I got to kill this shit because right. I got nothing to lose. I'm about to start the security job. I'm miserable right, right now. Finances are fucked up. Like I Sometimes I still, feel, even at my, in a late age, I feel like I have nothing to lose. So whatever I do, I got to do it to my best of ability. Right. And I'm not saying that I did things before. Not wanting that, but the fire in my eyes is way more, you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. So back to you, you're on the casting couch, giving no. it your all. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you're improv no. I'm, Yeah, I'm just, I'm, we, going with, we going back and forth over the screen. He's laughing at the shit, and he's like, yo, great job, blah, blah, blah. You know, kind of vague and shit, but I know I made him laugh genuinely. Gives mm-hmm. me a handshake, blah, I'm walking out the block. Literally, I'm on my way to the, to the train. I get a call, yo, they liked it, they, they fucking with you, blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, they made the offer, and that was a good little piece of money. Not a lot, but it was enough to where... You didn't have to do that security I job. I had to do the security job. I made a couple dollars. I got into SAG-AFTRA based off of that. And fucking Spider-Man. You know what I mean? Like, it's That's one crazy. check, but it was like... It was one of those, I'm telling you motherfuckers checks. You know what I mean? Like, I told y'all we just need I'm to... I'm laughing at Yeah, you we got to be committed. Back. Let's commit to this. It's like, it was a sign. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like... There's plenty of signs where you like, there's times where you like, maybe I should just go get a regular job. Yeah. Maybe I should, you know, I need to, I got bills to pay. Yeah. Maybe I should, this is a dream. This is non-traditional. This isn't guaranteed. You believe all of that shit. And then look something at God. like that. Look at come God. Out. Yeah, look at God. That ass. And it's like, oh, all right. You know. And like elevate you, your brand. Hell yeah. Did you, do you celebrate your victories? Even if they're small? Sometimes. Yeah, I try to. I do. I do. You know, um. I try to, yeah. Yeah, I take a second and be like, you know, grateful, appreciative of it, you know, but I at think the same I, time, I fucking obsess. Yeah, and I think it's know. important. You know, I think so many times when, when we do things and we accomplish things, sometimes yeah. I think that we say like, oh, we're not there yet. You know, I still got more right. to go. Okay, we, right. I know that, but you should... Tomorrow I ain't promise. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, so you know you definitely. But yo, the Spider Man that that's 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 a great you know to have a re- on the resume, man. That shit was cool. That shit was. 
So you got like Spider Man and you said Guy Code simultaneously, kind of. I got Guy Code around the same time. So like around this time, like I said before. I wasn't making no money, but I was starting to get some momentum in the game. I'm being on better shows. Like, uh, you know, I'm starting, people are starting to ask me, take me on the road a little bit. Shout out to my man Hannibal Burris. He was headlining on the road and he would say, yo, come through. You was that open before up he got crazy with the, the Bill Cosby stuff? Yeah, he ain't get crazy. But Not get crazy, that. but you know yeah, what I mean? Before, the, yeah, like, this was things before got crazy. Bill. Yeah. Like, he got mm-hmm. a lot of, like, mm-hmm. he wasn't doing no Bill jokes back then. Nah, he wasn't doing okay. it. Not the real. And that whole thing got blown out of proportion. Like, like so much comic stuff does. Yeah, that shit got blown out of proportion. It was, you know, what? none of this shit that he said wasn't anything that wasn't searchable. Facts, he said, yeah. go to Google. Yeah. The shit was on Google before the joke. Yo, you know but, what? Be- before we even go into guy code, I, 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 being that we're on this topic, I got to say this. Being a comic today, right. it's got to be so tough. And I'm going to explain to you why. Got so it. many emotional people. You can't say anything. God forbid yeah. you say something wrong about a Mexican, a Chinese, or right. this. It's like all over the internet. Next thing you know, it's like you, you don't think it's like people are so emotional these days. That you can like, comedy should be the one place where you come in and you laugh. I'm explaining to you what I love about comedy. I mean, mm-hmm. I always been like a class clown, fool, I love to make people laugh. Sure. But Stop. one, but one thing I really love about comedy uh-huh. is that like. Hey, when if you had a hard week, you go to a comedy show. Right. You get that off your chest. Exactly. You know, you don't worry about if they're saying... I think sometimes people are so emotional about what people say. But I will say this with Hannibal Boris, man. He's being tapped by some of the pause, but uh, some of the big dudes. i never forget. Uh, Bun, uh, Drake uh, has this thing in Houston called uh, Houston Appreciation Weekend. Mm-hmm. And he did a Bun tribute. Right. And at this Bun tribute, he made uh, Hannibal Boris uh, come out and say a couple of words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he did a baseball game and all yeah, that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, baseball mm-hmm. game. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, you know... So he's kind. Of, you kind of like his protege, kind of? Nah, we could. That's my man. Like, I, don't, I wouldn't say I'm a protege. He's he helped me out. Right. He gave me opportunities to open up for his audience. You know what I mean? Like he was, because he's been drawn for a while. Like you know, he's he's done well on the road for quite some time. So it was a different opportunity. It wasn't just performing for sixteen motherfuckers in the room. Right. It's a, you know, it's a full theater, sell out comedy club so you like okay there's some reward for this shit so i was doing things like that i was starting to you know get on better lineups within the city like i was doing showcases and shit like that so i did an mtv showcase and it went well how'd that happen same management was it the manager yeah uh, was it management it could have either no i don't know i don't know i think it was it was this this God. woman named it was God. It was God. <laughs> now it's this woman named Sachi, Sachi Ezra. She was uh she's like a she was working at MTV two at the time, but she used to produce a, a comedy show called Hot Soup. Mm. So she would have a bunch of comics on there and on the other side, like her day job would to bring people up to, you know, M T V and have them be looked at and shit like that. And she would have these type of uh she would have these uh comedy shows over at Webster Hall. So I did a Webster Hall comedy show, MTV showcase. MTV people are in the building. I had a great set. You know what I mean? So then they called me in. And this is when they were thinking about doing Guy Court? Not even. Like, you didn't this even... is, they brought me in on some other shit. Because what happens is, you know, these, these companies always looking for comics. You know, always looking for new talent. So they're always out and they bring people in for like a general meeting. Nothing deeper than that. Just They just want to know where you're from. They want to know what you're doing. What you, you've had any ideas, blah, blah, blah give you a you know look at you maybe cast you have some ideas so they did that type of thing there was this one pilot they were trying to do that didn't go anywhere but while we're in the room going over that this dude ryan ling came in who's the creator of guy code he came in he was walking through just on the humble right just you know and i i I said what up to him spoke to him i used to do sales so when people come in the room that look like they got some shit going on. I inquire, yo, what you what's going on? What you working on? He was like, I'm working on this show called Guy Code, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, I think I could be good on that. He was like, all right. <laughs> that was, you you, you know trying to I mean? never go back to that security Hell job. Hell no. Yeah, you got to be proact. Fuck that. So I put myself out there. He was like, all right, come in. I came in maybe a week later, met with this dude, Andy Stuckey, who's like the director, showrunner. Chopped it up. He was like, yo, listen, don't try to be funny. Just answer the questions. Just be honest. Speak how you would feel, you know, what you really feel like. And we did that. And then from there, they were like, yo, would you like to write on Guy Code? I said, yeah. So they brought me in on, you know, the writing tip. This is before we even went to air. 
So at this point, I don't even know if I'm going to make the cast. I'm just writing and shit. I'm just coming up with funny shit. I'm telling stories in the room, blah, blah, blah. They laugh. And then after a while, you would hear them say like, oh, yeah, we should have you say that when you're, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, oh, shit. Sound like we about to be on the show. Right. And then that's where it started. Now, I, I know contracts sometimes are tough. Go ahead. How did that, uh, you know, I mean, you obviously have a, you know, you had a manager or right. an agency. Right. Uh, you know, like MTV's contracts were good enough for you to go around. Yeah, I mean MTV. The thing with MTV, especially initially, they not going. You're not going to get paid. Like you're not going to make a ton of money, but they're going to put you on. Sure. You'll be seen. You'll get noticed, and you leverage that. You know sure. what I mean? Yeah, because I always tell people like, if you're not getting paid from it, you should get paid for it. Right. So he definitely like. Well, made if a you're not getting paid for it, you should get paid from it. You are saying potato, potato. So, so Guy Code is now today, and it's how many seasons? Uh, five Guy Code, and then I'm on Guy Code versus Girl Code, which is this is the first run they've done of that. So it's like six seasons. Yeah. So I hey, listen. It's still it didn't get canceled. No, nah, it didn't going. Get, shit is still cooking. You know, I know of it, but I never really, really fucked with it. I like, okay. meaning I never really wa- like what what would be some of the things that that I would need to know like what, it's basically it, it, it I feel, is I need hot. a church fan yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm on a, it I'm in here fan this nigga here texting, gonna have he looking the like an old black woman mm. yeah, I'm in this start that home like this you over there looking like big mama in yeah. church what would on um, Sunday Straight. what are some of like the big topics over the years of, of you know, guy code that I would need to know guy code shit like uh like what what, what do you consider guy code uh you know we'll talk about. Uh, what do we talk about? Like, if you're dating a girl right. and you break up with her, your friends can't hang out with her afterwards, or you break in the call. Yeah, hey, listen, listen. Like get, let him that. fucking give the guy code. You're a girl. Things like that, though. You know, just like what we called it was the invisible rules, like the etiquette, shit that you give might, me some, give me some. Sorry, no. Give like, him some. Simple to that point. If I got, you know, if I dated this girl and you knew that was my lady, and we break up and we was serious, you don't never need to fuck with her. You know what I mean, and not 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 on no. You can't be cool with her, but you shouldn't try to holler at her. That's you know that's my shorty. Yeah. You know what I mean. Not to say, and obviously, you got to realize, guy code is also targeted towards high school, college kids. Yeah. You know what I mean. As you get older, certain shit ain't as serious as it used to be. But you know, what else is guy code? What have we talked about? Talked about. I mean, we talk about silly shit everywhere from being horny. We talk about balls. We talk about. Uh, we talk about should a guy shave his pubes? Is that or is that like breaking guy code? Uh, I don't know if you shave. Ain't nothing wrong with taking care of yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't want your shit wolfing. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, you know, get rid of. I little... mean, especially with the girl, you don't want to go down there with weeds and shrubberies. I go down there with a machete. Especially you know it's I mean? August right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's a sweat box. You and, want your and shit. You know when a girl got like a wolfing box? You know it's you know the next thing that comes with that. What's coming with that? The stank, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of sweat in there. Yeah. It's a lot of sweat. And, and we don't need that. So make sure you uh, get that bevel on that charge. You know? you know. Shout out to bevel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or let, get some, some ventilation. You yeah. know, don't have your shit just... Just don't wear no drawers. Muggy. All right, well, there you go. You know what? Let's ladies. take a break. Let's take a break. Take your drawers off, ladies. We'll be back. We're going to take a break. Internets, don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. You listen to the Premium P Show with Miss Listen Knows. We're here with my man, Damian Lemon. Who ain't got no lemon, nothing. Nope. Nothing. But we'll be right back. Al. Cheer. It's your boy, Brooklyn's finest, New York Giant God's favorite DJ, Clark Kent. You are listening to the Premium Peach Show with my homie, Miss Lissa Knows. And she knows. And she's as funny as it gets. Pay attention. Internets, and we're back. Yeah. Listen. Mr. Damien Lemon. Ow. You know what I tell everybody? What do you tell people? You have the best hairline in the podcast game. You use in that the, bevel? In the podcast game? Well, damn, I, yeah, I, I mean, it's limited, that. my nigga. Right, thank you. Niggas thank on you, TV you, is better exactly, than your shit, nah, but nah, your nah, hairline nah, is made for podcasting. I think my shit's trans. Yo, yo, first of all, let me tell you something. Fuck that. How the fuck is your, how, yo, your hairline has not moved at all? You got the Steve Harvey wig line? No, no, no. That shit is official. You can hit this with everything. It's there. All right. That motherfucker should start at the eyebrows. You got the Mexican hairline, man. I ain't mad What's your that. nationality? I'm black. I'm, I'm mixed. <laughs> I'm African American and, and Negro. Perfect. <laughs> black. And Likewise. Black. You know what I mean? There we go. Old school. OG. So we're talking about guy code. Yeah. To stay, it's funny just to think. Like, I, and you know what? I love your story even more, and that's why I'm glad that you know you come on the show and then people can hear the story because think about it. Like you see a guy come in, you ask him like, "Hey, what do you do?" Right. And next thing you know, it's six seasons later. Right. Just on that. Yeah. You know, like it just goes to show you that you know, closed mouths don't get fed. 
Right. I guess so. Yeah. Right. I mean, Stripper, talent, talent. Stripper quotes. No, but talent, <laughs> talent definitely matters, you right. know? Right. Follow up matters. Persistency matters. Uh huh. But, um, yeah, no, you know, it's, it's that that's that's inspiring that, you know, you can find a tool that is not that hard to Hey, yes. To use. Now you think about tool. it, think about it. Most people listen kids <laughs> these days hard. don't want to Google. Kids these days don't want to Google. It's too much for them. Like uh, I gotta Google it. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I guess so. No? But kids was lazy when we was young. Nobody wanted to go to the library. Nobody wanted to go to the encyclopedia. It's the same shit. You have any kids? Nah, I keep them in my what? balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I'm chilling. Nah, 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 no kids. You don't want no children? I don't know. I'm back and forth on it. I feel like that's either the most selfless or selfish thing you could do. Are you in a relationship? I'm in a relationship. With that same girl that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. She oh, wants yeah. babies. Mm. Yeah, when you got the Spider-Man check, she definitely went to the store, man. Yeah, she been holding you down all these times. You yeah. got to drop... You got to shoot that club all up. All the way up. You got kids? <laughs> yes. How many kids you got? One. Six. Oh, yeah. Okay. Shout out to the ones that didn't make it on pro choice. There now some of them on the on the bed sheets. Yo, you know you know you know one thing I like that you said? Yeah. I heard you say before you were like, yo, when you start on the come up, especially in comedy. Right. You you know, you you you're in these clubs, mm -hmm. you're doing guy code, but you're still a regular dude. That's what people think like, you know, you're making orders money. Right. And then you were saying something about being at like the corner store and you're like, damn. I want to make sure nobody knows me, right? Because right, I, you right. know, I want to use this EBT card, right. and I don't want them to think that you know. There's nothing know wrong with that. ODB taught us that's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, you I know. got some hot food the other day with mine. I, yeah, that's I call that shit hood anxiety. You know what I mean? Like the little shit that we be thinking of, we be bugging out over. You know, um, they, I mean, it's a struggle at first. There was a time when I was like dead ass. Like, in that joke, you know, I had a manager and I had a caseworker. Like, shit wasn't really popping. Pop. <laughs> I was in housing court. You know what I mean? Like, I was out there trying to survive. You know what I mean? You went to comedy cell in the county court. You know? Yeah, yeah. It was it was real. It was real. And it was it was what it was. It was yeah. what it was. You can't, that's the thing about comedy. You can't... It's, you were on stage. You can't hide on stage. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's going... You got to be who you are. And then... You know, like, I might be on the train. Niggas be like, yo, what the fuck is you doing on the train? Same shit money, you doing. Nigga. Yeah, come with the fuck. <laughs> yeah, people, pe people think that, you know. I mean, it, it, it happens, you know. I mean, I spoke about that. You know, it's social media. Yeah. It just gives, you know, keep in mind, too, I say this all the time. Even whether it's girls or guys or things, we get a chance to take the photos we want to take. Right. Girl wakes up, you know, she looks in there, you looks in her phone like a selfie. You know, it takes a picture. Not that much, no good. You know, she keeps on waiting until the right one. Right. So she puts out a perfect, you know, perception. Right. Unless you on this show in which people taking candidates and then they drop it and Google files and then your co-host has no fucks to give and you're going to have spackle in your eye and you're going to be all over the blog. Yeah, but that's because... I'm, well, looking that's crazy. Real, though, that sounds, that sounds like something personal, but I'm explaining to you what happens is that's because you're one of those girls that I'm look at every fucking picture. I don't like the way I look in this. I don't like the way I like this. Then they'll fuck can be in a picture with a mop in the back and their ass on the sink and I'm like, I like this I one. I don't never put my ass okay. on sinks, my, my jeans. So how y'all know each other? How'd this whole thing happen? And tell me more about you. I know you. Tell me more about you. This ain't your podcast. We, we, we don't know, know about we your talking. journey. We, we want to know well, about the well, limits. I'll give you the short version. Give me the short version. I got some questions. I'll give you the short version. Uh, we met at PNC okay. when we just were starting the other show. Okay. And um, I had a show. She had a show and okay. she used to just be around there. Okay. Know. Yeah. Like I have nothing. Like <laughs> I'm just wandering just aimlessly no, no, no. with a cup <laughs> in yeah. a dream. Like, okay, you okay, know, hold on, hold on. Please. When I met you, you uh -oh. didn't have a show. Oh. You just, I did have you a just show. Debuted your show. You so that means I had a show. I, no, no, no. If listen. I just debuted, I had it. I was like growing it, but it was a show. No, listen mm. to me. I'm listening. You did not have a show. I Ooh. did. Then, Damn. then you debuted your show later on. I had a show. I would see you every week. I was. I had. That's because I had. And then I remember the name of the show. The Miss Listen No Show. Wow. You didn't know about it. Yeah, I don't know. I seen there were a bunch of crazy girls there, but anyway, she, <laughs> we met through there, and then you know time came on. She, A King would you know A King? Yeah, I know yeah, A King he, of course. He he would uh, bring her around, and then when my situation came up, I thought uh, it'd be perfect. You know, I just felt it would be perfect, and it was. You know, That's so what's up. just in the sense of vibing, just in the sense of you, loyal. you know, just different. Yeah, right. And you doing comedy a little bit though on the low. Uh, I don't want to say that because I feel like I don't want to be bigger than my walk. Like, I went to a workshop uh -huh. and it was for, like, I guess people that want to break into com the comedy. Other comedians were there. Yeah. And it's for, like, it's called the Laughing Buddha. 
Okay. And they were just like, does anyone want to come up and try? We're going to give you like two minutes. Right. And I was like, I'm going to do it. Right. And I did it. And they always say that it's, scar- it's scarier to do comedy in front of other comics because they don't really laugh. Mm-hmm. But like, I, I did a great job. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that kind of made me more nervous because now I'm like, ugh. I made comics laugh. Like, people were coming to me like, you should really do this. I was like, this is my first time. Right. And I, now I'm just, like, frozen. Mm-hmm. What were you talking about? What was some of your content? Like, real silly shit about how my hand is too small to do self. Like, it was, like, real, like, white hum- humor. More mm-hmm. like that, you know? It was just, like, fun shit. I was trying to, like, holler at this white boy. And mm-hmm. this is, like, really what's happening. Right. And I was just talking about, like, the difficulties in that. Mm-hmm. And then, like... I can't really remember everything, but like, yeah, so, I mean, and then whenever we do this, I'm funny, right. and then I have a regular job. Funny I how? Do. Funny how? Honey, I don't want to talk about it. And. Blow job, she has. No. Uh, no, no. You know. No, I'm, no, okay, so this is a secret. Mm-hmm. It's exclusive. Oh, well, shit. Look at I this. work at a gym. Okay. So, when I'm there, like. Internet's head on over to that gym. She's I'm in her spandex. I'm not dropping the gym. So people are always coming up to me, even at the gym, like, yo, you should be doing comedy. Like, you, what are you doing? Like, I have a lot of them following the podcast. So, I mean. Right. She's on her way. She all the way up. She's on her way up. Just go for it. Go I all know. Why did you say white humor? Because for some reason, I feel like every time I go to, like, black comedy clubs, it kind of feels like they put you in this box where it's, like, a lot of them talk about race. But when I when I was doing my jokes, I didn't want them to feel like... Maybe I shouldn't have said white humor. You're right. right. But I just didn't want my jokes to be, like, racial. So it had really nothing to do with that other than the dating. But I wasn't talking about, like, black people this or white people that. It was, like, my struggles in trying to, like, communicate with this white boy and having small hands. But... That transcended to the Asian lady coming up to me and then the white guy, the old lady, like everyone was just like, that was really funny. And there was even a point where I was talking about like iPhones versus Androids right. and like I had like a fake heckler and I was like, oh, you must have Metro PCS. Mm-hmm. And everybody started laughing. So like even in my first time doing it, I was kind of like prepared for a heckler even. Right. So it was just like, it was a really good moment. But it kind of like, I feel like it scared me. Like, I feel like I would have been better if I would have bombed because you could only go up from there. Yeah, but you never know where you could go. Right. You know, you could have five, six, like we spoke before, you could have five, six, seven good shows Mm -hmm. and then bomb. And then then question yourself like, oh, shit, am I even good enough? And, you know, in this day and age, you know, like I told you, people, you know, it's, it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure because keep in mind, you're doing comedy. You got to deal with that pressure. Am I doing good? I right. bombed. Are people laughing? Then people don't know what else you got going on. Child support's late. Right. Bill payments, car payments coming. Right. This one's screaming on this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't like writing. Right. So you don't like th- writing. You sound like you know, you know what you sound like right now? Like a, like a lazy nigga. fuck. Like you know those girls no. like I ain't bending over. I'm more conversational. Oh, I so many motherfuckers so like, up with that don't write shit. I'm, it's more like for me, like because I'm not really but um bump, so it was really hard for me to do a joke in my mind. I haven't really like because I'm not in that world yet but I've always like thought it would be harder for me to repeat a joke so for me I was thinking more like along the lines of like Sinbad he does more like bullets and then he engages each audience differently like because he already knows the story it's just a matter of delivering it however he needs to do it for that audience so I mean I feel like it'll it'll, it'll happen I told myself that I was gonna do it this weekend that's that's funny that you even said that well there you go I told myself that because I my gym is literally across the street from a comedy club and I told myself like I'm just gonna just like do it one of us got to jump out there. Yeah, because so, I like exactly what you said. Like, I wanted to do it on the low because right. all my friends are like, let us know when you're doing it. I'm like, nah, I don't want that. Like, if y'all find out about me doing it, I want it to be because I'm popping. Like, right. yo. So, Jack Thriller, right. he was like one of my like kind of like mentors because right. like he does interviews and he does stand up and everything. He's been telling me to do stand up for like four years. Right. Like, every time I'm seeing, like, bitch, like, what are you waiting for? Yeah. So, and what are you afraid of? You just you fell. You just, <laughs> I told him I was afraid of failing. He said you're failing already. <laughs> like that you're is already true. failing. That is true. You're not doing it. Yeah, you know it, it, it's it's not as easy as people think it no, is. No, it's but, not. But one thing I love about this day and age, especially with the podcast, like you know, we'll obviously do a live show. You know, maybe at the end of the year, maybe. Right. I'm not sure yet, but what I'm saying is that's another chance to do type comedy type. Right. Stuff. Of course. You know, and 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 one thing I like is 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 me and Sife are going to do something. I went on Sife's. Um, 
the UCB theater, the oh, yeah, yeah, don't, yeah, take yeah, yeah. don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. I went right. on there and I had a good time, and I kind of did it a little bit different. I was doing like almost my own comedy, right? While then then they reenact and improv it, right. but I, I I mean I loved it, and then I was like, you know, we, me and him were talking. I was like, yo, I hate that you have to like go through these rules. Yeah. In comedy, yeah. like, and he was you like, he said, like, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do. And anything. then he was like, yo, you have an audience. Yeah, he's like, we could team up and do a show together, and invite other co comics, you know, yeah. and you could start like that, you know, yeah. and uh, you know, it's just some. The problem for me is, and, and you know, it's not about only me, but the problem for me is, I'm already older. I do so many things. To it's a lot of time to invest to build your name up. Yeah, I have a name, but not in comedy. Yeah, but so, you so, know. Marlon Wayne's just started doing stand up. Yeah. Like recently. I think honestly, we put all that shit on ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All yeah. of that that we be stressing about, that's shit that we've created. You know what I mean? Like your friends want to come really truly to support you cuz they right. fuck with you. And honestly, truly, they know you funny already or they they see you as funny. They might not see you as a great comedian because you haven't established yourself like that, but they come in there to support you. And if you bomb or if you kill, if they really fuck with you, they're going to fuck with you. Right. And they're going to thug it out till you get better just like everything else. Just like the podcast. When you crack the mic initially, it could have been bumpy. It gets better as you go along. True. You just got to stay committed to the shit and everything. You can't. You give yourself a million reasons not to do some shit. All you got to do is just do it and then keep doing it. Motherfucker talk themselves out of something. Yeah, and then once you start doing it, just keep doing it because it's, it's easier to keep doing it once you start. Because wh when I first started, the thing was, you know, you don't get on stage that often. So you might get on stage once every couple weeks. So you spend that two weeks between stage time fucking stressed out and getting crazy over. <laughs> I hope this shit going to be funny and da 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 Honestly, you just need to have a good fucking time. Because truth be told, a lot of this shit don't fucking matter. Right. You know what I mean? If you have a bad show tonight or whatever, niggas ain't going to give a fuck about that shit by next week. But there's too you much going I mean? on. It's but, too much going on. But even, even for you, even yeah. even as you gone through, like mm -hmm. at the garden when you had that. I got booed at the garden. But and, and, and walk us through that night. That shit was terrible. <laughs> Done. Here we go. <laughs> no, no, no. But I, t I hate telling the story, but I tell the story because I'm just. All right. I went to. Uh, I was doing an April Fool's comedy show, High ninety seven shit, and uh, I was, you know, I was drunk. Fucking no, no, no. I wasn't drunk at all. I was nervous as shit though. Why? After you've been doing it for a minute. I had been doing it for a minute. I was already thinking of what could go wrong. You know what I mean? Like I, I came up. I came up doing a lot of like black rooms or hood rooms or whatever they call it or whatever, right? That's like a black show, like that April Fool's show. Yeah, sure, sure. I've been to that. Like, it's, it's the 187 show. It's like a black show. I do, I've do. i been doing mainstream, do alt rooms, all over shit. And my comedy, I'm not going to like pander to the lowest common denominator comedy. I'm just not going to do it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to go out there and be like, I'm not like, I don't knock it. But some of that shit is is bullshit. What do you mean, change your style? Yeah, I gotta be me. I gotta be. I gotta be me, and I gotta be all in on who I am. And the thing was, at that moment, I wasn't really committed to. I was trying to play it safe. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's a difference between when you do anything. There's a difference between trying to win and trying not to lose. Mm. When you plan to not lose, you're not playing to win. You need to like really be all in. Like fuck it, win, lose, or draw. I'm I gotta lose on my own terms. So I came out halfway, halfway pandering, halfway like doing shit that I probably wouldn't have done. And then it was just little things, mechanic things. Like I was a little bit more nervous than I should have been. I came out to um, I wanted to come out to So Ghetto, Jay Z, So Ghetto. That's one of my favorite Jay Z records. This shit is bananas, right? So I'm like, when them drums drop, that's just, that's, you know, in the black room, you need to come out sure. to some fly shit. You sure. damn near like a record. Sure when they bring out. you out, nigga, you gotta, <laughs> if, if it, you gotta, you know what I mean? You gotta be damn near on beat, because you just, niggas was partying before you came sure. up. Oh, uh, before I let you. That's my shit. Hello. Uh, so, uh, you know, nigga, you need to be, you know, sure, you're gonna turn be it moving. Up. Right. So I'm coming, I'm like, all right, so ghetto, that should be crazy. We ring off in the so garden. so ghetto that bitches, they want to fuck You know, and that beat. But what you might not remember is that beat take a minute to drop. <laughs> that, beat, that beat is like, dum, dum, dum. It dum, is. Dum, dum, dum. dum. Rockefeller, y'all. Dum, 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 dum. It's mad time. But it only take you, speak. dum, 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 to get to the mic. 
So now I'm at the mic waiting for the beat to drop. And the beat ain't dropping yet, so I'm just this nigga looking like it's an uncomfortable, awkward situation. Hey, yo, DJ, let the beat. This nigga can't make the beat drop no faster than what's going on. So the beat finally dropped, but it's, we, I done been out there Six for minutes. a minute. Yeah, I done been out there for a minute. So I'm like, all right, cut it, DJ. You know what I mean? Niggas ain't, all right, okay, that's abrupt. And then uh, I might have said some old other shit. And I did my show me love like a dead rapper joke, right? We used to kill. Show me love like a dead rapper. I go to this whole big thing. But the thing was, you know, the point of that joke is to show me love. Niggas show dead rappers way more love than niggas. Sure. Say, you know what I mean? That when, would when, always... they, when they're dead, then they're yeah, alive. Yeah, exactly. So you would ask in the crowd? Like, is that, that's is that just, just, that's just like a, that's more like a, a setup to a joke. You know what I mean? Show me love like a dead rapper. Niggas are, and then I do a whole thing where, you know, uh, maybe I'm, this is an older joke, but, you know, I'm back to when niggas was getting killed, you know. Nowadays, rappers are dying from natural causes and shit, you know, niggas, you know, it ain't beef no more, it's just too much pork, you know what I mean? Yeah. Silly shit like that, you know, your favorite <laughs> rapper suffers from diabetes and hypertension, you know, all of that silly shit. And it hits, but niggas got caught up on the Tupac, Biggie, like they yelling out their favorite dead rapper that's kind of slowing the joke down. And then, um, I love black people. Yeah, niggas was, niggas was like, all right, we going to do that. And I was like, this ain't really interactive. And I couldn't really, I got off, I stumbled a little bit. And then niggas wasn't like, again, niggas, their tolerance, you got to, this so niggas was like it was a couple boos like the fuck out of you know because everybody niggas, in the audience think they're a comedian everybody in the audience think they're a comedian I'm following JB who did 20 minutes who was oh, supposed you to follow headline JB? yeah he was supposed to headline I'm following this nigga just destroyed 20 minutes killed it I'm following this nigga I, and um I'm still Johnny Unfamiliar you know what I mean? Niggas might have guy code, but that's MTV too, so it's a few niggas that don't. And it's a lot of niggas on guy code, so it wasn't Damian Lemon. It's, oh, that, I think that's the black I, nigga from guy. Like, yeah, is that who this nigga? Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm still at who this nigga stage, right? Yeah. So I'm doing some material that niggas wasn't fucking with. They were starting a little small booze at first. And then me as a New Yorker, I let my ego get the best of me. We in the garden. I got people from MTV. I got my, like, I got, you know, people in the building. I'm like, y'all niggas going to boo me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm familiar with everybody in here. Oh, some Snoop well, at the training Source Awards. Shit. Shit. Now exactly. you on your training day. Exactly. But, I, you know, you 5,000 motherfuckers, you like, oh, word? Word? So we going to boo you hard. So we going back and forth and then. I wasn't going to get booed off the stage. I was still going to try to do my thing. And quietly, I'm a little charged up. There's, I don't know if y'all ever seen it, but there's a clip on YouTube. If you've never seen it, there's a clip of Bill Burr getting booed in Atlantic City. And it's, it, this motherfucker's getting booed for about eight minutes. Damn. And he's like, I'm going to do my time. And he's going through and he's killing them. He's like, he's saying some, he's in Philly and he's going in on them. You fucking racist fucks. You got a statue of Rocky Balboa. He's a fictional character. Joe Frazier lives there. You fucking da da da. And killing them. They booing them, but they laughing. He's like, I got five minutes left. And he's killing these motherfuckers, but he's doing his time. And it's amazing. It's like a turning point for Bill Burr. Like people was like, oh, he's that shit. So I was like, this could be that moment for me. <laughs> no. no, sir. No, it wasn't that. No, they was they was undefeated in the garden that night. They was like, yeah, nah, nigga, you got to get the fuck out of there. I waited my time. I got off. I was devastated. I felt the way. My ego was crushed. But then more importantly, I had to headline Caroline's in like two weeks. So I got all this propaganda. I'm going on the Breakfast Club. These niggas is booming. Yo, I remember break, you know what I mean? Sha- yo, Charlemagne Sha- <laughs> yeah. had me dying. I remember when they were like, uh, excuse me, put your mouth on the boo. Exactly. Mic. Who's your favorite yeah. basketball player? Booby Gibson. You know, yeah. silly shit like that. But you took it. I took it. How you got, I mean, it is part of the game. It's like, you can't take yourself seriously. You, you know what go I mean? Back, you could go back to that night. Would you change anything? Oh, yeah. I would change a like lot what? of things. I wouldn't have fought them. Mm. I would have taken a second. And recalibrated and told another joke that hit rather than panic because I panicked. My ego got inflamed and I got nervous and I was I was thinking about how I looked up there. You're that's the hood, yeah. And that's that hood anxiety shit. Do I look crazy? Am I out here look, yo? These niggas are trying, trying to play to me. me. Trying to yeah, me, yeah, you know what I mean. Now that's some non comedy shit. Tell jokes, pop. This is April Fool's. Just <laughs> nah, be you a funny. Scorpio. You start trying to sting everybody. See, that's I my, wanted to, yeah. See, that's my problem because if that happened to me, I probably want to fight the, somebody in the crowd. You want to because that's your ego. But if you came to do a job, I right, y'all don't like that. Acknowledge it. Y'all wasn't feeling that. Ha ha ha. All right, boom. Tell another joke. And then you could probably get your ass up out of there. What did the uh, MTV people say? 
they ain't really say a whole lot. Like, you know, I was one of these people. I was bringing it to everybody before. Like, I ain't want, you know, it's one of those things where there was people that seen it. You know, you got booed at the garden, so there's people that see it and they was acting like they ain't want to really talk. You know, it was yeah. Oh shit, they, you know, they ain't want to really. T- but I was like, fuck it, I, we go. It's the elephant in the room, yo. I just got booed at the garden. You know what I mean? I was, I had to go to an MTV party like two days later, and I talked to people about it because it was what it was. And then I had to get it off my own, my sure. own shit. And I talked to JB after the show. He talked to me for like 20 minutes after the show. Like just, he was like, everybody done got booed. Dude, you know, I'm a physical comic. There's times when I throw myself on the floor and I'm picking myself off the floor, dusting myself off and nobody's clapping. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just part of the game. He was like, you got to talk about this shit. And I'm all in my head is I'm like, yo, I'm at Caroline's. I hope this shit don't define me. I hope I don't become this motherfucker that got, it's the, you know, when you sure. first start anything, you feel like anything could stop it. You feel like, yo, well, it's over now. I'm right. exposed. I'm not, fu- you know, but you, you don't get feel like beyond that, that shit. You more people out to Caroline's because they wanted to see if you was going to bomb it again. Could've. I mean, but that don't want niggas coming out there. Like, there was they a lot of niggas hitting me on Twitter like, I'm coming to boo, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's Twitter. These motherfuckers don't leave the house. I'm coming to boo. You know, it's like, ah, oh, shit. But I, you know, and I got there and I, and I like, it was... It was yeah. I, the bar. I was. I was charged. I was like, I got to kill this shit. You still doing that same joke, the dead rapper? Yeah, I've done. I've, I've done it since then because it's a dope joke. I did it on my special afterward, and it hit. That joke was like ninety four percent. You know What's what I mean? What's your process to write? Mm, it's different now. I write more on stage than I do now. But like, I. Tr- I mean, if I'm being good about it, I sit down for like an hour, and just write. Like just write. It don't have to be anything funny. It could just be like a rapper. Not even just just writing whatever's coming to mind. It could be about everything. And then maybe I'll find some funny shit in there. I might find a topic I want to talk about. Blah blah blah. I bring it to the stage, and then you know I explore it on stage. I see what kind of laughs I get off of it, and I just I expand from there. I I'm just a- write down stupid shit that makes my friends laugh, but then after I reread it, I'm like, I don't even know how I said this shit. Like, what was that? Right, like, right. Was right, that right. funny? Like, I'll do that. Sometimes I'll do, like, if I'm saying something and I say something funny, like I say it in a funny way. Yeah. I'll take my voice recorder and record how I say it you so I know. elevated everything. That's dope. That's yeah. what I had. Yeah, yeah, I'm you like, do that. I don't even know how I, I'm like, why is this funny? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Listen back. And then also, when I go on stage, I tape everything. Like, I take my voice recorder. I record my sets. So then, because you don't hear everything in the moment. And you go back, and maybe you thought you did worse than you did or better than you did. And you're like, oh, I know I got to laugh off of that. I ain't hear that. Maybe I right. should expand that. You're doing homework on yourself, you watching gotta, tape. That's you, the thing about comedy. That's the thing. And it's, 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 it's as shit has gone, I'll be honest with you, I didn't really get, like, I had a real job before comedy, right? So I did comedy because I wanted to do comedy and you you, know, you thought it was going to be sweet and you know you just be paid for being funny. Right. But this shit is fucking work too. Like the more opportunity comes, the more demand of what you need to do, you have to approach it as a job. That's your job because Most definitely. these jokes become your inventory. And there's so, so many have- people, keep in mind, there's so many comedians out there. Yeah. So don't you want to separate yourself? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, don't you want to train, get in the gym, the yeah. comedy gym? Mm-hmm. Do you guys ever have some like, have you ever had someone like steal one of your jokes? Uh, or have you ever stolen a joke? I've not stolen a joke. I don't steal joke. I've had somebody. Yeah, I had somebody steal my joke before. I had somebody steal. I had to talk to him. Right, right like you pressed him. Get the fuck stole over my him. joke and brought me to the stage while he was doing my shit. Really? Oh uh, yeah. And I was like, what the fuck kind of shit is this? When we got off stage, I was like, my man, you know that's my shit. Oh yeah, my bad. You know I'm fucking up. I'm da 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 da. Like, and then we we settled that. But you know, it don't. It don't How do you crack. settle it? Like, does he give you some money? No, nah, you just say don't do that shit. Nah, I would have went right in his pockets. You gotta pay for your intellectual property. Yeah. Like, he gotta give you a coin. I would have went right in his pockets, man. I would have been like, listen, give me whatever you got, and we even. That joke you know, was eighteen dollars. Just approach him. Let him know. Listen, we can't have that. I'm definitely want my money. But listen, so so the the, the booing I feel made you. A Back strong, to the booing. <laughs> no, no, no. The booing That's made the title you of this a strong, a stronger person. <laughs> right. And and then you know here comes your own show. Right. That yeah. on on True TV. I was actually on the train and I seen a fucking uh, uh, poster right. with your fucking face. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Who is this motherfucker? Yeah. That was How'd dumb. that happen? How'd that happen? They approached. First my- of all, is True TV. That, used to be court is that TV. basic cable? Used to be Core TV. It's basic cable. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
they approached me. They hit my manager. They they had an opportunity. They wanted me to, uh, to test for the show, to host the show. It was, it was created by a guy named Mo Mandel, who's also a comedian. On the show? He's been on the show a couple times, but he created this show. And they wanted they wanted a host. So they was looking for another host. So they had a short list of people to, to uh, audition. I auditioned, got the gig, and that's where we've been. Yeah, they got I was, a, was on that list. There's a couple people. I ain't gonna put nobody. Who out you? There. Who you over here beating out? Yeah, no. But All I right, don't I do it. How's the, war, how's the war? How's the war? Wardrobe um, budget? Oh, it's decent. Because I see that you got them. You got them uh, uh, jackets. You got them different shirts on. I'm like, okay, you got the. Yeah. You know, yeah. they got it. They got me in a lot. See, of you jackets. wearing different clothes every yeah, every yeah, episode, yeah, my yeah, G. Yeah, yeah. Y'all must be rich. <laughs> no, 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 doing no, no. something. You go over there changing clothes. First of all, it's good to have a wardrobe budget. It's yeah. good, and 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 also they they must have a good. Uh, what's that one? They have the food. What's that called? The craft services. Craft, oh, services. How's the craft services? It's decent. It's really? Decent. Yeah. Shout out to I forget my. They girl. even they give some food later. to the audience members and some beers. Nice. Beers, some pizza. Yeah. Get you nice. Get yeah. you fat yeah. real quick. Yeah. Get you right in the moment. So what know? is the show about? It's called Comedy Knockout. It's on it's, True TV. It's called Comedy Knockout. It's on True TV. It comes on Wednesdays, Mondays, and Wednesdays on True TV. It's a a, a a competition show where comedians, they compete to be the funniest in the room. You know what I mean? We play a bunch of games. They they roast each other a little bit. Uh, it's about, there's three acts to it. We let the audience vote on who they thought was the funniest after each act. The first person eliminated has to go sit in the audience amongst the people that just voted them off of television. So that's funny. You know, you're in the peanut gallery. Then it comes down to the last two comedians as a head-to-head. Whoever wins the head-to-head, they win the game. They get a trophy. They give, like, a quick little speech. Then the other person that loses, they have to apologize for being terrible at comedy. And they got to read an apology that was written by the writing staff Okay. About them that they've never seen before, and they got to read it into the crap. And it's, you know, it's funny. Yeah, I you see, call I, my friend Grimace. Like you said, she like baby Grimace. Who's that? Carrie. Oh damn. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Carrie. Yeah, that shit was Carrie out her. here hustling. Yeah, she is. Yeah. She I seen I seen guy. one of the episodes. A uh, dude was reading off the uh, what's that called. When you read teleprompter. teleprompter, I'm like, damn, man, I can't even see that bitch because like, I got beady eyes like Buckshot. Shout out to my man Buckshot. I'm like, <laughs> I got to be looking like this. I got to be on one of the motherfuckers with contacts or, 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 or bifocals at that bitch, you know? Yeah. But no, it's it's good to see that you know you're out there. You know, I seen they were pushing the show a lot. Yeah, they pushing it. They so were. is it one season or is there you know we're, gonna we're get in the two middle se- of taping our second season now. We're in the middle. Of, I got uh, a. What did you of- sign on for for two seasons? Uh, we got a few seasons. Uh, the first, we got some time on there. Really? We That's rocking. dope. Yeah, they just, they just, you know, it's all options. You know what I mean? Like, they could be like, it's a wrap. But uh, they just, they greenlit the second season. So we just, we're in the middle of shooting 16 new episodes. I got six more to go. Start, go back taping Monday. I tape Monday through Wednesday. Where they tape out of the city? Yeah, 106 and Park. Oh, okay, the Studio dope. up there. And then uh, they're going to, you know, we got new episodes now. We went from one time, once a week to twice a week. That's so dope. the show's doing better and it replays well. They fucking with it, you know, and it's a good opportunity. It's good to be out there with a bunch of comedians. And uh, I've never complained about being on TV. It's a beautiful thing. And it helps get people out on the road. Yeah. So shout out to True TV, everybody shout over out to there. Them. Yeah, Embassy Row. You know what? Let's go to uh, I Don't Trust People. Right here. Well, let me tell you about I don't trust Uh-oh. people. Okay, I, I don't like trust people. Shit. I don't trust people. Is I started before we even started the premium Pete show. Right uh, on Twitter, I always write I don't trust people. I don't trust lawyers with cheap suits. I don't trust right. mechanics. And we made this segment when we when we started the premium Pete show. Right. Internet, you know how to get involved. Make sure you listen. Just keep on use the hashtag I don't trust people. Just mm. shoot shoot tweets out there, and we'll search through that. Make sure you you can even add us at the premium Pete show at premium Pete at Mrs. and Nose. Let us know who you don't trust. What you don't trust. What do we got this week? Our first submission comes from E Miami Jet. Premium Pete, I don't trust people who screenshot their tweets and put them on Instagram. Oh, shit. That <laughs> whoa, that whoa. Must... He's coming for your head. Now, you, you know, that? I, I do that a lot. You why know, do you why do, do that? Why do people, what do y'all want to get more people? You want like... the Instagram followers to go to Twitter and follow you. I'm explaining to you. Does that work, though? No. It doesn't. I'm explaining to you why I do it. Go ahead. I like it because when you, when you screenshot the tweet and then you put it on Instagram, it's like your own little picture. Yeah. Right? But the thing is, the people, like, it's almost like Facebook and Twitter. They're two different animals. Right. I know everyone on Facebook. I don't like them motherfuckers. Right. I hardly know anyone on Twitter. I love them. Right. 
You know what I mean? It's talking shit on the block is Twitter, and then Facebook is like family reunion. That's people that really know you. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, I I do it because also people on Twitter sometimes really ain't on Instagram. Mm. Vice versa, sometimes. They're not on the Instagram. No. Sometimes I just have really great tweets, but because I don't have a big following, I just want to take it to the people that are actually paying attention and just, like, drop a gem real quick, and then hopefully they'll go to Twitter and, you know, show No, but hey, listen, he doesn't trust people, and you know what? We got to respect that. I mean, you know, uh, sometimes I'm not to be trusted. (laughs) So I apologize, but uh, I'm still going to keep on doing it. Our next one comes from Black Cells 716. I don't trust people that say must be nice after you tell them something positive or good going on in your life. It's really a sign of hate, to yeah, be that's honest. Hate. That's hate. Like, you, you, oh, it must be nice. It, you know, it, <laughs> it is. It, it is. It is hate. Like, and, yeah, it, it is. And you know what? I'm 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 guilty of that. I have done that throughout my life. <laughs> and it's like they're trying to make you feel bad. For no, no, but I have accomplishments. Yeah, must, be I, nice. must be nice. I have done that. Like, you know, like I will speak to my friend and I'm like, what are you? doing is like yeah i'm going to grab this new mercedes benz and then i gotta hit a flight because i'm going to aspen with me and my lady and i'm like man it must be nice wow. i've said that before right you know just like kind of like man you're living you i want to live your life you i've know? never said but just that. joking not saying it like you uh, hate like him. i mean don't lie don't I mean, try to lie now my nigga you was a hater don't act like you were never a hater don't i've been like, a hater but i don't say must be nice. I say uh-huh. that's how you got pregnant hating on that other girl with this dude worrying about his penis uh, next thing you know what mm-hmm. oh, first of all that's how you Real don't story. you ever try to make it seem like I was some kind of side bitch that had a, a, a no I never said you were side baby. bitch my baby was a plan by two dummies we were in love there was no other chick that had to worry about correct yourself mm. now mm, mm, mm. probably a, oh probably probably this one's probably P-R-A-L-L-Y probably okay. Okay. probably a given but I don't trust people with outerwear on in this heat that is so true. Oh, jackets. I see yeah, that's I from, see. This comes from you heard me, dog. Yo, I seen someone in the city. <laughs> you heard <laughs> me, dog. You shout out to me, dog. <laughs> shout, <laughs> out to, shout out to you heard me, dog. Yo, I seen someone in the Not city. Not dog. It's D A W G. Dog. I seen someone wearing a fucking uh, snorkel uh-huh. in the fucking city uh, last week. Cracker. I saw this dumb bitch today. Like, I wanted to scream at her. She had long sleeves on, a long dress, and she had on some, she had prosta boots. I was like, girl. What's prosta boots? When, Prostitute the, you boots? You know, the boots that, yeah, the thigh. Uh, I thought they were the macaroni. I thought she said pasta, pasta boots. Prosta boots. boots. I was like, hungry. I don't like you. Like, I just don't. Like, it was just too much going on. Like, are you Muslim? Like, why do you have uh, three-fourths of your body covered? Like, it's really <laughs> hot today. Like, I just wanted to ask her so many questions, but I was too busy sweating to even engage. Yeah. But I don't trust people that do that either. I, I agree. And our last one is a Pete tweet, but I feel like we've said this before. I don't trust people who smoke cigarettes but never have cigarettes and ask everybody for cigarettes. I don't trust any motherfuckers like that. Yo, it happens all the time, especially at the workforce. You'll see a dude that always yeah. asks you for a fucking cigarette, <laughs> and he and and, and 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 you give it to him, but then you realize, oh, this dude's asking every fucking day. Right. He living off y'all. Yeah. yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Get That's your own fun. fucking cigarettes. Listen, no? cancer is 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 free. There's yeah. no reason for you to hold on to your pack, acting as though this is going to be the last. Listen, just give the person a cigarette. It's not that serious, unless you're on your last. No, no, no. Unless no, it's no. the one that's flipped upside no, down. No, People do that. The flipped, the the, the wish you, cigarette. What's, the, what's that Unless about? it's the wish. What is that about? I don't know. I, 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 I used to do that. Black I, people, do that. I don't trust people that flip a cigarette in the in the pack. But unless it's that one, it's not that serious. I used to do that. Shit, that shit did not work. I was. I used to make a wish. What's the what are you gonna get from that? What you wish it for? Not to I was cancer. wishing for guidance. Like, I hope this ain't the I one. Hope this ain't it. <laughs> this ain't the COPD pack. Well, uh, I don't trust people. This is from Miss Listen Knows. I don't trust people that like if you offer them something like food, like oh you want some food, like nah I'm good, and then when you start eating, they want some. Yeah. I hate that. You person know what that is? I'm greedy as fuck. I'm like bitch. That's I could have got you your own Whopper Junior. That's uh, a person who is shy to ask. And but then, I offer. And then when they see it, they're tempted to ask. Well, now you're going to be tempted to cry because I'm going to tell you, hell no. Damien, do you have any? I just said what I don't trust. I told you I don't trust women with no pinky toenail that paint the flesh as if they still got a toenail. You could actually glue a nail on, <laughs> girls. You don't even glue the nail on because that on. might come off in the middle of action. <laughs> and that's going to be traumatizing. So you just want her to have the bare nail? Just let it be real so I know where you're coming from. Don't, you know what I mean? Don't let me have to put this this painted nail in my mouth and then... Good night. Shit tastes like a leather raisin. (laughs) 
But well, uh, that's what I don't trust. Well, you internet, I mean? so, listen, that's I don't trust people. You know how to get involved. Make sure you submit them. Use the hashtag I don't trust people. That's I don't trust PPL at the Premium P Show at Premium P. Let us know who you don't trust, what you don't trust. What else you got? You got something? Oh, that's it? Okay, well, listen, let's, we got a couple more uh, uh, tr- convos with M- Mr. Lemon, and then we're going to chop it up and end this episode. Yeah. Yeah. You um, want to take a fun break and then... Oh, yeah, you know what? Let's take a break. Take a break. We got to give... Fucking, somebody might break. have to pee. Somebody might need to smoke they wish cigarette right now. Uh-oh, let's get Damien's it. out here dropping gems, lemons, toenail clippings. We got to take a <laughs> quick break. Yeah, Internet, don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. You listen to the Premium Pete Show with yeah. Miss Listen Knows. A.K.A. Beyonce. Damien Lemon in the motherfucking building. Yeah, Extra Cheer. sour. No Ow. booze. No booze. Hey. Fuck you. Cheer. Internet's. Make sure you follow the Premium P Show on SoundCloud. Subscribe on iTunes. Leave a comment so we know it's real. And tell a friend to tell a friend because we are the dynamic duo. It gets no better. You got the ow and the cheer. Listen, Damien, did you tell these people to fucking subscribe on iTunes? Subscribe. Press that button right now. It don't cost nothing. There you go. You know what I mean? Except cheer. 108 minutes. Support is free. Unless it's child support or EBT. But other than that, Ooh. it's free. And now back to the show. Al. You are listening to the Premium P Show, Miss Listen Knows, and sitting with us is Don Lemon's cousin, Damien. <laughs> oh, you not a, related to Don Lemon? I am not. Not at all. You sure? Because he's black now. Ever he since, is, like, is he black again? Yo, he's black again because he, after all the Black Lives Matter issues, like he finally had to take a stand. Fuck like Don I can't Lemon. T- I can't get a cab either. Like yo. I'm tired of talking to these police officers with such a certain kind of he was saying that like yeah. even I have to talk oh I heard that I saw that like, one and that's yeah. when he became black again man right. fuck him though fuck him though Why? Al Roker that's who Al I'm Roker. fucking with Al, Al Roker I fuck with Al Roker Al Roker yo let me tell you something that stir of the cup is legendary yeah legendary the way he was stirring you see, you <laughs> I, like yeah. old, I like old Roker I like fat Al Roker <laughs> yeah I like old yeah. Roker I don't like, like I like, I like fat Al Sharpton Yo, Everybody's um, better when you're Honestly, yeah. honestly, uh, no disrespect, but A. King, he lost a lot of weight. He looks like Al Sharpton now. Good night. Yo, real talk. You know how I, I, I realized that? When, 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 you know when someone loses weight, but their air canal shrinks too. Sometimes people like lose weight, but like some of their part, you know, like their body or their head doesn't. You, you, you were staring yo, at his ear holes? Yo, his ear. You ever see Al Sharpton, how his ear got skinny? No. You never see that? Take a look at his air canal. Real talk. That shit is skinny. That shit looks like <laughs> his air canal look like 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 his clavicle bone. You know, real talk. So Good night. You got a little splimmers. But no, no. Listen, you know, um, I'll tell you one thing though. You know, when you really, really start to look at like you know Al Roker and that whole situation, right? It's amazing how they downplay shit for not only just white people, but just like people who they think that you know is supposed to be like celebrities or right. or or, or, or right. how, how do you say like non touchable. If you untouchable, try to untouchable. apologize for that, man. Yeah, like you know, he you know those good boys, right? Nah, man. But that, yeah, but that's more like for white for white people. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because if that was a black dude, they'd have talked about everything he had done wrong in his past True. and shit, and, and it would have been a little different. Whereas they didn't even want to say he lied. Yeah. That was the thing. No, he didn't lie. He was just exaggerating. He's embellished like the truth a little yeah. bit. Yeah, they, they beat around the bush. Anyway, you know what? What is your best, you know, like as far as audience, like who do you like as far as nationality? Do you ever get like a lot of good responses from certain nationalities? Nah, have I you just realized like, that? Nah, I mean, I like, I like, nah, I don't look at it like that. I like a good audience, nice mix of people. I like a diverse. I just like an audience that's live and they ready to have a good time and they ready to laugh, they ready to listen, they ready to get into it. Out beyond that, I'm not really that picky. You know that's what I'm good. saying? I'm trying to play everywhere. All money is green. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. Now, we spoke before about podcasting. Yeah. Now, you have your own podcast. I mean, who doesn't have their own podcast? You know? Right? What, but you've been around for a minute doing podcasts. I've been podcasting. around for a minute, but, you know, podcasts is just mixtapes for niggas with opinions. You got that right. But um, What's the know, name of it? Uh, It's called In The Conversation. Okay. It's me, my man, Vladimir Kamanyo. Oh, the Russian guy? Nah, he's Dominican with How a the Russian fuck? name. Vladimir come on you? Nah, 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 nah. Yo, yo, come yo. on, yo. Come on. Come on, yo. Wait, hold on, hold on. Okay. How the fuck is this guy's name? Vladimir Kamano. Come on, yo. He Sounds like a too. Russian Italian. Yeah, out there. It's like Vata Banjan. Yeah, he talks about that. He talk about that. Yeah, he, he's pop. Yeah, he's a comedian. Yo, I go on there. I'm ripping pause, but uh, I'm. I'm I, I, go in. He'll, He'll be ready. I, I got to go in on homeboy. I got to be like. I'm you know, gonna be nice. He's got the borscht and the pasta. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's him and my man Ali Muhammad. Okay. And, uh, it's the three of us. We do a podcast called In the Conversation. 
Comes out every Wednesday. We talk our shit. It's a what are you one. talking about on there? We just talk about It's just really a conversation between the three of them. These are people I wanted to do a podcast for a long time, and it was just like, I need a point of difference, blah, blah, blah. I was overthinking it, kind of how we saw about with the comedy shit. And I just said, you know what? Like, I talk to Vlad all the time. That's probably my closest friend in comedy. I talk to my man, Ali. That's one of my close friends. We used to work together back in the day. And we'd had these wild conversations. And I was like, well, fuck it. We should might as well just have these conversations with the people. You know what I mean? And then that's what it came, in the conversation. Is it planned, or do you guys, like, freestyle? It's a little bit of both. We try to. If we're doing well, we try to have our little topic call the day of three topics we're talking about, blah, blah, blah. And then the shit run on a tangent. Of course. How's the quality? Over. How's the audio it's quality? It's good quality. Good so audio. So you need, let me tell you something. Yeah, you I don't can't mind have that, that bullshit. Every, I don't mind that everybody has a podcast these days. It's a good thing. It just happens. That's just life. Right. But yo, some of the quality I be hearing on, like I try to listen to new podcasts. Internets, tweet me your podcast. Right. I want to listen. I'm not somebody, I want to hear other podcasts. I want to hear what you're doing. I like to listen. To, I don't want to only listen to myself. Yeah. But the thing is, do not tweet me your podcast if you're fucking taping in your bathroom. Yo, I was listening to a podcast. Somebody tweeted that me their the link. That has the best ac- ac- acoustics in the bathroom. No, no, no. Listen, somebody tweeted me their link. I swear to God. I pressed play on the joint. It was like, hey, Jimmy, how you doing? We're over here. We're going to podcast episode yeah. 12. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, you can't have that shit. Motherfuckers are talking on Nextel. It's doing podcasts. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah, but true. also, now, you said you're in for a couple of seasons with Comedy Knockout. We, we're, um, we're doing season two of comedy knockout that should be coming out like uh september november but there's still new seasons every wednesday and monday it's on youtube it's on true tv it's on true tv watch it on true tv first yeah Get no i think YouTube. it's a true tv uh youtube channel watch, oh, it, well, there shit. watch it there too yeah watch it digital watch it just Got- you know support that and shit. make sure you guys comment and like you know yeah, show love. leave some feedback so he could get right boo on coins. there right yeah, boo yeah, on yeah, there boo there you go. right boo yeah do that all of that shit um, what about um, and I'm on the road I'll be on the road I'm in um, I'm in North Carolina I'm at uh, North Carolina yeah Charlotte the Comedy Zone coming up September 8th through the 10th yo what happened with Charlotte the, they had the All Star game there and, and then yeah. it got pulled away yeah that was a whole thing cause uh, cause of the, the, the the gay like somebody I forget what they they're upholding this thing where they could they have the right to refuse service to anyone based on anything or some shit like that and LGBT was not fucking with it so they and you know the NBA is just trying to sell tickets and you know Jordan must be furious yeah I'm sure he was think about, sick not much, about it yeah. you know how much money he lost yeah you know you think and, and, and for just Charlotte just yeah. for show in general, and and you know that's sad. Like to me, like I think racism is so much more than just people. I think t- today's days people just say like black and white racism. You know, racism is even on that sense. Like that that's terrible that they couldn't be more open minded. Mm-hmm. You know, in this day and age, mm-hmm. you got to think about it. Think about the day we live in. I always say when I grew up, the way I grew up in Brooklyn. Back when people used to be, if you see like a guy kissing a guy, mm-hmm. people were like, oh, what the fuck you doing? Get the fuck out of here! Right, like, like almost where they want to beat somebody up. Right. Like the way they got angry. Right, 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 now right, it's right. like you know. Now it's normal. It's okay. That's what they do. That's There's what they more do. More tolerant. Right. People are more as tolerant as, now. Well, as long as you ain't doing anything to me, like that's not what I do. Right. Because it ain't your business. That's right. Yeah. So what the fuck? Like to be honest with you, for them to hold on, who is that? Like the mayor? Is that the I don't governor? Know exactly who it is. Whoever it is. But what I'm saying that's racist. Well, it's not. It's, it's, it's being biased. It's being it's biased, biased, but it's yeah. also based it, on sexuality, though. It's not really racist. Okay, it's sexist. Yeah, sex is a homophobic or whatever. Yeah, it's fucked up. But it's fucked it's up. Discrimination. Yeah, yeah it's but discrimination. For what? Who's it proving? And then I heard, you know, I heard even I, I was reading an article. I heard somebody say, if they want to do it, they they could do it, but they shouldn't do it out in the open. Right. Says who? Yeah. If the motherfucker wants to get a slice of pizza and kiss his fucking man on the fucking lips, right? Put a tongue in his mouth, whatever he does. Dope. That's his fucking opinion. A girl. I definitely agree no? with you. I mean, but I mean, why don't you go do it? Go ahead, kiss a girl. Hey, who gives a fuck? Done Katie and done. Perry. Check, yeah, check yeah, now. Okay. Done. Oh, shit. My thing is, I just feel like because I have a daughter. So, I straddle the fence because I, I no, some of my best baby. friends, and like I said, right. I kissed a girl before, but I'm not going to sit there and talk to my daughter about it. And I remember we were walking somewhere and she saw like a picture of two guys kissing and she started asking me questions. So, it kind of opened up a conversation that I wasn't ready to have right. with my child yet. So, for me... I feel like, I mean, maybe we should just be more uh, censored with all sexuality, not just, you know, male and female, because she still gets 
ugh, when she sees a guy and a girl kissing too, but it was even more weird for her to see two guys and she was just like, what's going on and what is this? And I was just like, I don't want to yeah. talk to you about that. Like, let's go to park. Yeah, but keep in mind, keep in mind, I just want to say this. It's 2016, yeah. about to be 2017. You over here talking about like you kiss a girl like it's a big deal. You no, I said it was. I said, check, check, done. Kiss, kiss a girl ain't nothing. If you ain't, if you ain't muff diving in that box, I, I don't want to hear that shit. Come on, man. You know, like, you got, like for the culture, step up your game. Real culture. talk. Now, think about it. Like, <laughs> think about it. <laughs> think, think about it. Okay. No, I'm just saying, you know, it's muff like, dive. kiss nothing a girl. Nothing wrong with muff diving either. Yeah, K- yeah. Kiss, but kissing a girl in 2016 is so, like, normal. That's like chewing bubble gum. Right. Yeah. Come on. You know, let me see you. Let me see you steam that asparagus. Yeah. Put a little bit of seasoning on Asparagus salt, is pepper, a little the bit of garlic. Okay. You know, but you're gonna put that 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 that, that he ain't thing on top. He wants to see nobody cut the peach up. He want to see the asparagus. Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Don't worry. So you're on the road. Guy code, girl code on is the out. Road, but you yeah. all these fucking guy code over- versus girl code still on uh, Tuesdays. I think we got a couple episodes. What's left. that girl with the tattoo joints on that? You cool, huh? He trying to beat. Trying to get out. Who you talking about? What's Carly. That? Carly. You know her? I know Carly. Carly's yeah, she people. got to come up here. I got to talk to her. I'll at her. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but I don't know who the fuck. I don't know her. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, try to link you. Yeah, okay, okay. Up here. Yeah, she's good people. She's funny as shit, too. Good yeah. people. Yeah. She got a man? I don't know if she got a man. She might. I, don't I know. tattooed I'm not, that you know. pussy. Okay. Now I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay. Yo, low key, Nat, I swear to God, I'm girl, playing. I gave him a side eye just for you. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm faithful. That's your lady? That's my lady. Yeah, I'm faithful. Oh, you got a lady and all. They got a baby and yeah, everything, you know, right? You out you, here. He's a regular old black man. Got a baby, no <laughs> ring, a lady. He's <laughs> on it. You know black, the presence of a presence. You know, you know. Exactly. You there, though. I mean, that's what it is. I'm here. <laughs> I could be I'm anywhere, present. but I'm here right now. You so know, let's <laughs> let's enjoy. Listen, I was I was married many years ago. Yeah, and that put a little bit of salt in my mouth when I got divorced. Pause. I hear that. And uh, I'm so thankful I found a lady. We've been together. Do you five. still believe in marriage? I'm curious about this. I okay. Here's the thing. I'm gonna get married to Loki Net because she deserves it. And we need to just solidify it. Right. But it doesn't mean anything to me what it meant to me as a kid. And I'm explaining to you why. Explain. People want to get married and then like, hey, babe, we're married now. Everything's changed. No, bitch. Nothing should have changed except mm. your name. Mm. You got to love each other. Mm-hmm. I say it all the time. You got to love each other. Mm-hmm. People, pe- the thing is, people get married and they think everything. You know, they, they they have these these this mindset of like, you know, like it's it's so different now. No, if you didn't love each other before, you're not gonna love each other now. If you had problems before, right. you got married. Shit, ain't, you know, you got a magnifying glass on them problems now. Yeah. I I just feel like and a ball and chain on your foot, you ain't going nowhere. And I'll be honest with you, and I'm not judging. Look, these are my opinions. Yeah. I don't want anybody. You know, people complain about other people's opinions. That's just his day and age. Right. But keep in mind, I'm just being honest. People, people put down, you know, people put down eighty thousand dollars on a wedding, and then yeah. and then and then go live in an apartment. Like have a ten thousand dollar wedding and put seventy thousand yeah. on have the house. Have a five dollar wedding. Mm-hmm. No, Do but what I'm saying marriage? is, think about it. I believe in it. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, no, I'm not, not here excited for it. about it. Yeah, I'm not like. But why? But why? Because he's a Libra. I mean, because he's a Scorpio. He's too busy moving. I just, I'm like with you. Like you know. You feel like your lady deserves it. You know what I mean. You you want it more for for them. You know yeah. what I mean. Like you know. And but I want to do it I've right. I've never been married. I've seen some marriages crumble. So that shit kind of fucked me up a little bit. But I I love my lady. You know what I mean. I love that we what we have and right. all that. She's been there since the beginning. Yeah, she's been there. And then, you know, uh, we'll see. We gonna we gonna get to it. You know what I mean. But I it's, think that is more about like the connection, like what Pete was saying. However, like you definitely should marry someone if you really feel that connection, because God forbid something happened to you, you want them to have like they have your best interest at heart. So you want them to be in control of that. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. what you gonna, you gonna make us sign a prenup? Nah, she's not. Nah, he listen. Any more movies? Any more movies? Ah, you know my lady's Oprah. I don't know if y'all niggas know. <laughs> <the> fucking <laughs> oh, you fucking from, Oprah? Yeah, that's why I had to get a job. She wasn't supporting no niggas. Oprah, yeah, Oprah, Oprah that got that good hair on that bush. And oh, Gail, her, her, her boo. like a relaxer. Yeah, <laughs> like a comb it to the side and shit. It's like, yo, oh. she got it. Like, what's his name? Like a uh, young jock. Oh man. Oh yeah, I seen yo, young jock. You got saw the, that? He out here looking like a five heartbeat. Yeah, yeah, got a little conk. I used to date a girl that had a pussy like that. Head in the in the toilet. She was crazy. You said you used to date a girl I used to with date what? A girl had a pussy just like that. Little, the little head, bouffant, yeah. Yeah. And then she had the slit. 
Uh huh. She was crazy, <laughs> looking like I Don her, Draper. She had silk, silky I pu- badge hair. Like I, I, I basically to get in, I pulled her to the side. My shit is peasy. She was crazy. Little peasy, little something, little static at the door. Hello. That's always good. Hey, listen, you know, it's smooth, but I'm saying when it comes through, it's there. When you're in the building, you're in the building. You they, don't think about what they, was they always want to check your ID. You know how it goes. Gonna get stuck in the back of the throat. Uh-huh. Any more movies? Ah, uh, shit. Yeah, we got a couple things. We out here. We were. Uh, we got a couple little things. We still working. You know, um, if you watch the night of, I had a little quick cameo in that. I've been shit. watching that, that show. Cool. I got to episode three. Okay. Well, what well, episode you episode in? Episode four. Uh oh, so we almost get there. Ready. Sign my phone. I'm watching it, it on the app right now. There you better is. get ready to get that popcorn. I'm so ready. But listen, internet, listen. you're on D Lemon Comedy on uh, Instagram. Yeah, D Lemon Comedy, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Beats Being Broke on Snapchat, if I do that at all. And uh, yeah, D Lemon Comedy. Check out the podcast. Do you really rap? Nah, I don't rap at all. No, oh, no, Beats I mean, Being Broke. Beats Being Broke. I used to produce. I used to. Oh, manage Beats producer. Being Broke, done. But yeah. like, I was like playing was off a, words. Yeah, it's a double on time. Yeah, because that's how I do. Exactly. Yeah, got you. Listen, yeah. you hove. Keep there on making is. people laugh. Uh-huh. Keep on, keep on winning. I really, I'm, I'm. Listen, I know you for a minute, and I'm really, really happy. Even like with that boo, I felt that boo was sad, but it's what you. It, it made you. <laughs> So much stronger. It was no. a boost. No, it was a boost. <laughs> Is that what you going to say? Let me ask him, do you have a boost mobile? <laughs> nah, I don't. Okay. No, 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 real talk. I'm, I'm proud. I love I seeing shit it, like that. I mean, look, you, you know my story. Yeah. I've been away, came back home. Right. You know, uh, tra- changed around my life. So I like seeing, even though that's not, you didn't do no bid. You don't nah. know what he did. You don't know what know. did a bid? You did don't a boost. Know. Nah, I ain't do no bid. No, no, I know he didn't do no uh, bid. He know. But what I'm saying is, I love that you know you're in a better space and right. that it made you stronger and made you and what you out here winning. We out here work. We, we out here winning you, and working. You ain't going back to that security. My last thing is this. You never even got to the security. No. Thank God. No, Fuck no, that no, security. Never bought the uniform. Hello? My last thing yeah, is this. Pay for the license though. I always talk to comedians about this. Go ahead. We're funny. We're yeah. people who like to make people laugh. We're always right. jokey. Uh-huh. We're not the most serious fucking people. I love how you just became a comedian. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Well, I, I could be a comedian. I just don't have to be a stand-up you comedian. You said we. Uh-huh. we. No, no, I mean, right, I do what you got to do. Shit, I want a title too then, shit. Okay, so then we Take call it. you We all as comedians. As comedians. Buy my Talk album because I'm a singer. No, you ain't a singer. I'm singing. As do you a, sing for real? No. Okay. She's trying. She's trying. As as comedians, uh-huh. okay, Do you? How, how often do you get depressed? And how do you deal with that shit? No, no, the reason why I say that uh, for, and we have, first of all, I always talk about depression. Right. Because I want to make sure that people know that they're not alone. Yeah. And I know comedians be making <laughs> like people this. laugh. And funny yeah. don't mean happy. Yeah. Shit no, real yeah. talk. I mean, look at Robin Williams. Getting poignant to the motherfucker. I mean, we can keep on going down the list. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no, it's true. I think, though, I think everybody gets depressed. I don't like, I, there's been this thing where they say, yo, you know, comedians are dark and they're depressed. I think that shit is so pronounced just for the fact that you look to those people to make you laugh. So when they serious or when they on some other shit, it looks like a comedian thing. Now, we all get depressed. We all get down. We all feel a way. Um, I mean, I try to fight through it, man. I just, you know, like, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to say I like, you, got, go ahead. Do you talk to anybody about that shit? Or you just bundle it up inside. You know, I so we have a sip of some cognac. I do you all of that. I just you do fight whatever through it. Takes to, nah, Don't lie. Nah, you do whatever it takes to cope. You smoke. Yeah, yeah, if you smoke, that mean that ain't really helping the problem. Uh, I talk to people. I talk about it. You know what I mean? Like I, um, yeah, like I, I'll deal with it. You gotta. You have to deal with it. Like you know. I, can't, I mean, black people don't. They don't like to go seek help. They just like to. No, I it. shit. I've been. I'll go to a therapist. Yeah, yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. Hey, listen, Tony because Soprano let me tell you something. Let me tell you. Nah, nah, I, shit, I'll go to. I'll be honest with you. I, I've I've gone to it. I go to a therapist. I'll be honest with you. See, I speak we done to a got guy. it. Got it. I speak to a dude because this is the thing, and my lady kind of put me onto this because a lot of yeah, a lot of motherfuckers think that they don't need to go seek help or ask anybody or whatever, whatever, or they, they go to the barber shop or they go to church and they, you know what I mean? Whatever, whatever. Sometimes you need to talk to somebody that don't have to talk back. Like the thing is you might have friends that you reach out to, but you might be exhausting the motherfuckers. Mm. They might look at the phone and be like, God <laughs> damn. You know what I mean? Like, cause they not a therapist. They just your homie. And you like, yo, shit is fucked up again. They like, ah, you know, shit is fucked up over here. So pay somebody who's really there for that. 
You know what I mean? If you got a couple dollars, invest in your mental health. It's important. It's important. Niggas is shooting up everything. These yeah. motherfuckers is wilding out here because people don't really, they don't really express what they going through. You know, there's a lot of people going through some shit. And honestly, if you start getting it out and you talk to somebody, you realize it's not as, it's not as deep or as bad as it really feels to you. And I think, yeah, to your point, yeah, and, you know, get help. You know what I mean? Like, don't, don't put it under the rug. Don't just stay high and stay drugged up because that's just, you coping, but you're not really dealing with nothing. I'm not going to not getting high and smoking, you know, like and drinking, aid. you know, but yeah, that deal with the issues, deal with the issues, look into yourself. It could, it could help you. It could only make you a better person. So look at that. Pass the Damien. Hello. Yes. No, no, Damien no, no. X. And I want to let anyone know, and I told this before, anyone going to get some help. Anyone going through any type of depression, you're not alone, you know, and, and, and you know, just talk to somebody, hit somebody up and then just know that, you know, you're not alone. That's all. You know, I'm not trying to get past a Pete on every fucking episode. No, but that's important, though, Pete. I appreciate that you're doing it. I think more people should, you know, it's, it's starting. I've noticed that there's been a lot more of that. There needs to be a lot more of that. You know, it's nothing wrong with being, you know, investing in your mental wellness. Yeah. I mean, listen, you, you can even hit me up, but just don't exhaust you know, my phone, okay? <laughs> but internet, so listen, Damien Lemon. Mm-hmm. Okay? Amazing. Check him out. Thank you. Th- a great episode. I, I, I enjoyed this. I'm you know? glad you had a good time. Yeah, I had, I had low expectations, but you Absolutely. definitely... Absolutely, me too. <laughs> yeah, you fucked. Well, you came with no food, like, like, like yes. what the fuck, God. Anyway, internet, check for mm-hmm. Damien Lemon, okay? And he's he, he's out here pushing the guy code. He's out here pushing the, the, the comedy knockout. He's uh-huh. out here pushing a whole bunch of shit. Got his podcast flowing every Wednesday. It's it, dropping. It iTunes, is. SoundCloud. Make sure you follow that. You know, drop a little line so he know it's real. There it is. All right, Appreciate we, it. Thanks right. for having me. I had a great time. No doubt. No Peace. Doubt. Peace. See you next episode. Al. Cheer.